A district championship is on the line tonight for Grayson County. It is simple. If Grayson County wins the game, they will be hosting a playoff game here in a couple of weeks. If a loss makes things a little bit interesting. It might be Friday the 13th, but no tricks here. Just a chance to be district champs. And a good, good evening and welcome here to Grayson County High School for tonight's coverage of Cougar football on K105. Sam Gormley alongside the former Cougar quarterback, Kaylor Decker. And, and Kaylor, this opportunity, we talked about it two weeks ago mm -hmm. where you had the next step. Tonight, though, it is as simple as simple gets. Win and you're district champs for the first time since 2014. Yeah, I mean... Two weeks ago, we were talking about you were on the staircase to get to the door to the district championship. You climbed the staircase, now you just got to take the step through the door. And that's the only thing you got to do tonight. Grayson County defeated North Bullet two weeks ago, 42-6. to It was their fifth straight game. The sixth straight tonight, if they can pull that off, would be their longest since 2019. With a win, Grayson County would clinch a home playoff game for the first time since 2014 and only the sixth time in program history. A win would also give Grayson County their second district championship in program history. The other one came in 2014. Now, that's a little misleading because district championship is a relatively new thing mm -hmm. for Cougar football because there have been district undefeated seasons, and that's only happened twice that teams finished undefeated. 1982 was the last time that they finished 2-0, and yep. the only other time was 1981. So you have a chance to do that here tonight as well. And any time you can do something that hasn't been done in 40 years, it's a pretty big opportunity well, for Grayson County. Anytime you can match the 82 team, that's a big deal. And this team has been compared to that 82 mm -hmm. team with the opportunity that they have. By week last week, Grayson County 2-0 under Brian Jones in the bye week. I don't count the 2020 bye week that technically happened of three weeks off and then you jumped into the playoffs because that really wasn't a bye week. It was weird, yeah, and that's where things were. Was really, and you, you were playing then. And then weird. I also don't count in 2021, even though you all had the win, where it was after McLean County or mm -hmm. the Barron County game got yeah. canceled. So I don't count those two, but after traditional bye weeks, Grayson County is 2-0 in the Brian Jones era. On the other side, Seneca's the opponent tonight, 3-3, three and three, coming off of a 10 to nothing loss to Moore last time out on September the 29th. Last year, they won eight games, which was their most wins in a season since 2003. Seneca needs to win out and needs some help to get the number one seed as they still have to play Bullet Central since they lost to Moore. Head coach Keith Eckloff spent five years as the offensive coordinator at Mail before becoming to Seneca. And Seneca, new school for Grayson County. These two teams have never played. Located off Bardstown Road in Louisville. Notable alums, though. Diane Sawyer, Wes Unsell, and Gary Williams, who was an offensive tackle for Carolina through most of, from like 04 to 09, he played at the University of Kentucky. Got a big show planned for you here in the Locker Room Show. I'll introduce you to both the Cougars and the Red Hawks. We'll talk to the head coach of the Cougars, Brian Jones, and get you ready with the keys to the game. That comes up and more right here on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people, 
going in the right direction. Anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Cougar football on K105. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are getting ready to take on the Red Hawks of Seneca. Seneca is a 3-3 three and three record, 1-1 one and one in Class 5A. They're coached by Keith Eckloff. He's 15-28 and 28 in his fifth season. Jeremiah Towns is their starting quarterback. And, Kaylor, I, I got to – can I have a 10-second rant? Just mm -hmm. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. You can put me on the clock there. You can All see right. the clock right now, so I get 10 seconds. Seneca's only put four games of stats in instead of the actual six, which drives me as the media person absolutely crazy because I can't give you accurate information, and I don't know what has happened the last two weeks. Put in your stats. Okay, you there we go. I'm Perfect. Done. Good. Okay. Bang. That's it. I'm done. I won't mention it again. Jeremiah Towns, the starting quarterback, in the four games with stats, he is 44 of 84, 636 yards, six touchdowns, six interceptions. He is a true dual-threat quarterback. 60 carries, 350 yards, and four touchdowns. That is three times the amount of carries the next highest on the team. He did not play in the second half against Moore. Darion Spencer has also gone to the game at quarterback. Terrence Wilson has had the most carries other than the quarterback. In the four games, 17 for 208. A.J. Jaway, eight attempts for 41 yards. Corian Martin and Marcus Mays are their two main bell cows, though, that you will see out of the backfield. Wilson, also their leading receiver, nine receptions, 152 yards, 16.9 yards per catch. Darion Lacey has the most catches on the team, 12 for 124. Jeffrey Julu has six catches for 96 yards. The offense, 25 points a game. They were shut out for the first time all season in their last game. In their three wins this year, Kaler, 38.3 points per game. In their losses, 11.7. It's almost like those two mm -hmm. things usually correlate with that. The defense, 14 points per game. That ranks third in Class 5A, 25th statewide. In fact, it trails Atherton and Grayson County in the class defensively. Team allowed only 10 points in their loss to Moore last time out. It was their fewest points allowed in a loss since a 9-6 loss to Eastern on September 24th, 1999. Wow. So it's been a long time. I mean, when you lose 10 to nothing, your defense – they gave you a chance job. to win. Yeah. Uh, rush defense, 102.7 yards per game, 66.5 through the air. Jurian Thomas is their leading tackler, but Josh Padre in the middle, seven tackles for a loss through those four games. He is a force in the middle of that defensive line. Alexander Kalen is the kicker. I know Kaler, really quick, this team is similar to a Moore mm -hmm. where they're very athletic. Yep. And you've got to find a way to be physical with them up front and slow down their athletes. Don't let them get into space, which yeah. is one of the biggest things that you saw a couple of times late in that ball yeah. game. I mean, that's the biggest thing with athletes is be physical because they don't like it. I mean, they tend to rely on their speed and athleticism, make you miss. But you punch them in the mouth a couple times, they tend to slow down because they're skinnier, they're smaller. They don't like that. It hurts them. But if you can be the hammer like we've kind of mottoed this season, I don't think we'll have a problem with them. Grayson County is coached by Brian Jones. We'll introduce you to the Cougars after this. This is Cougar Football on K105. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we gotta operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. 
I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. Cougar football on K105. Welcome back to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are looking for a district championship tonight. Colby Chaffins, the starting quarterback for Grayson County, 41 of 91, 736 yards, seven touchdowns and five interceptions. Kaylor, you think he's coming off his best game? Yes, it's without a doubt it's been his best game. And I think for him the bye week came at a bad time because he was kind of rolling and had a lot of momentum building. But hopefully he didn't really lose much of that. If anything, he maintained it and he's just going to play just as well tonight. Caden Hanshaw, the leading rusher, 127 rushes, 835 yards, team high, 13 touchdowns. He's third in the class in rushing, fifth in touchdowns. He's caught six passes for 48 yards. Caden inching closer to becoming the first freshman in program history to rush for 1,000 yards. I know we had some potential questions of whether he would be the first, and we did do some further checking that he would be the first freshman in program history and the 12th all-time to achieve a prestigious mark for the Cougars. Jaron Van Meter, leading receiver, 18 passes, 331 yards. Grayson Chaffins, 18 for 274. Kenton Cornwell, 3 for 35. Mason Carroll, 2 for 35. The offense, 29 points per game. They've scored 20 plus in their last six games. It's the first time since 20, 2019 that they've done that. The last time they went seven straight scoring 20 plus was 2014. Well. That 2014 year just seems to keep on yep. coming back here. Uh, the red zone offense, 24 of 34. The defense has been the story, really, over these last couple of games. 9.4 points per game. That is the lowest in Class 5A, sixth in the state. They've allowed single-digit points in five straight for the first time since 2010, which was six straight. If they would allow 10 points or less tonight, that would be the third time in program history that they've allowed six, that, that in six straight games. 2010, and I'll give you another guess, Kaylor. 2014. 1982. Okay. So it just seems like it comes back to that. Brian Jones, head coach, we'll talk to him, get us off to the matchup after this. It's Cougar Football on K105. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. I'm not here to fire you up. If you're not already fired up, you shouldn't be in this room. If this victory isn't worth all you have to give, then leave. But now, right now is your chance to be a part of a victory the world will remember forever. Victory over cancer. This victory isn't just happening. It isn't inevitable. What does hope mean? Now is our time, your time. You may save someone you love. Time is very precious. Today's cancer research is tomorrow's victory, a victory that is there for the taking. Grab it. How was that? Now that was a great halftime speech. Let's go win. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Welcome back to the Locker Room Show here on K105. Sam Gormley now joined by the head coach of the Grayson County Cougars, head coach Brian Jones. Coach, how have you handled the last couple of weeks not playing? Well, you know, I, I, we, we got away from here. Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't around. Uh, kids weren't around. We had bunch of group uh, kids go out on vacations and uh, you know have some time away from football and hopefully that uh, pays dividends that they're they're hungry to get back at it uh, you know almost 14 days or I guess 14 days today from uh, having a game and um, you know I think uh, it allowed us to to get a couple of guys back um, allowed us to uh, heal some bumps and bruises and hopefully we're at tip-top shape for this evening. Tonight is senior night, and I always like to give coaches the opportunity to talk about each one. And you've got 10 seniors, so we'll go kind of quick, but just one by one on these guys, and we'll start. I have no particular order on this list. Caleb Constant. You know, he uh, was a guy that was with us a few years ago in the COVID year. Um, 
made it about two-thirds way through the season and then stepped away and has been away and, uh, you know, was really promising um, in fall camp as we were leading up into the season and suffered an injury. Um, so I'm excited for him to get back and hopefully get some opportunities to get on the field. But uh, just a good kid that works hard, loves the weight room, and uh, I'm glad he's a part of the program. Braden Mudd. You know, I think he's somebody that's grown tremendously physically and as a player, um, you know, from his freshman year to now. And it's it's uh, really enjoyable to see him have a successful senior season. Uh, I think he's had kind of a breakout year for us and does a really good job up front on the D-line for us. Jaron Van Meter. Uh, he's everything. Um, you know, I, I, he's something that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you get those kind of players – frequently um you know just tremendous work ethic um you know I think he's somebody that's always had the chips kind of stacked against him always got something to prove and uh, you know just physical as all get out um you know just loves the game and uh I'm glad he's having some some really successful games for us this year we need him to um but it's it's good to, for him too Sawyer Drake you know he's our uh, he's been our anchor there uh, for four years now on the offensive line. Um, you know he is uh, just really, really I think blossomed uh, and you know physically, mentally, uh, leadership, maturity. You know just everything all the way around. Um, you know he he's been a joy to have um, and has done a really really nice job for us up front, both sides of the football. And, um, you know, he, he's going to be uh, one that's hard to replace up front. Matthew Phillips. Another guy that, uh, you know, throughout the years has been in and out and um, just an animal in the weight room. Um, you know, just incredibly strong, um, quiet, and uh, just does, you know, his job to the best of his ability. And he's another one that's a, a big part of our success this year. Another one of those big guys up front, Weston Green. Yeah, a uh, guy that I think here in the last 12 months has just really flipped the switch on um, both sides of the football. He's been tremendously successful. He's been instrumental to our success as Jacob Lassley, you know, suffered an injury earlier in the season and has been out, and he had to step over into center, which is not easy. Uh, and on top of that, he's had a heads-up nose uh, for a majority of these games. So not only do you have to worry about having a good snap, you've got a snap, then I've got somebody right in your face immediately. He's handled it tremendously, um, and we owe a lot of our success to him. One of your linebackers, Conrad Raymond. Another guy that's kind of been in the program for four years, and we've been kind of waiting for a turn the corner, and, and it's uh, been a joy for us to see him flip that switch again and have some success and, and uh, really uh, you know losing some guys over the past few years at linebacker uh, for him to step into that role and, and do it well. You mentioned him just a minute ago, but Jake Lisley. Yeah, um, another four-year guy, um, you know, been uh he's a big kid for us and really expected him to to kind of anchor that line at center this year but uh you know has been out for several weeks with injury and uh, it's nice to get him back tonight and for the remainder of the season and hopefully that adds some depth as well as some size to us up front um and so hopefully we'll get him back worked in and last but not least mason carroll uh, Mason is, uh, you know, somebody that started for us last year and uh, has had some really, really big games for us uh, over the last two years. Um, haven't had him all four years because he spent some time uh, in another school, but uh, just somebody that I have seen tremendous growth as a person um, since we've had him. And, um, you know, I, I love having him. He is a hard worker. Um, somebody that's very hard on himself and has high expectations. But I think that's why he uh, has become the athlete he's become. When you look at this game here tonight against – oh, one more? I miss... How did I miss him on my list there? How could I – oh, I did. I just completely skipped him. Ken Cornwell. You know uh, – uh, <laughs> Good memory there. Yeah, I'd have gotten yeah. yelled at for that. You know, Cornwell is somebody, again, kind of like Jaron, undersized. Um, you know, he was a corner for us a few years ago and, and – uh, you know, very mature in the fact that he came to us last season and said, how do I get on the field? I want to play more. And, uh, you know, we said, we really, you probably need to change positions. And um, we moved him to outside linebacker, and it's been a great move for us. Uh, he saw a little bit of time towards the end of the last year 
and then has been a starter for us all the way around uh, this year on the defense side. Leads us in tackles, um, and uh, he is kind of uh, Mr. Everything on the offense side of the ball. He is the next guy up uh, at about four positions for us on offense, and he has uh, been there ready every single time this season when somebody has needed a break, somebody's had to step out for a couple of plays because of an injury or something. Uh, he has been a guy that's just been ready to step in so that we can keep marching forward. And, um, you know, I, I've loved to see his growth um, as a football player. And he is uh, he saved the day for us a lot this year. Last week, 16 tackles uh, is the most that I've known and can think of uh, in the last probably – five to ten years here and um, you know he just is everywhere that's not you inflating tackles which some teams I know like to do when you look at this game here tonight you're playing a Seneca team that if we're being honest is more athletic than you all how do you combat that well you know I think it's going to be similar to our more situation um, you know we're going to have to adapt in game you know in the more game I thought we'd be able to line up and run at them and we didn't we end up throwing it uh, almost 20 times which is probably our season high uh, so we got to be ready to adapt to uh, end game. But, uh, you know, I think it is uh, winning some one-on-one -on -one matchups. And, uh, you know, fortunately this year we, we've been able to win a lot of those matchups. And, um, you know, we've got some guys that are hungry. Uh, I think some guys that recognize the opportunities in front of them tonight. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're successful in those one-on-one -on -one situations. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to be able to run the ball. That's who we are and then uh, pass with some success to keep things balanced. Grayson County has only finished district play without losing twice. Last time was 1982. Haven't won a district championship since 2014. You get the chance to do both of those things tonight. How do you do it? Uh, continue to play our style of football. Um, you know, we've got to minimize turnovers uh, for ourselves. We've got to maximize uh, – you know, turning them over when, when opportunities arise, they're going to throw the ball in the air. We got to go get some of them. Um, we've got to tackle well. We've got to win the field position battle. And we've got to finish drives and maintain nice long possessions uh, that eat up clock. That's, that's who we are. Uh, when we're successful, we have those things going for us. And, uh, you know, to win any ball game, we've got to play that style of football. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like our team. And I like our, our chances of having those long, sustaining drives. They just got to finish in points. Coach, good luck. More comes up in the locker room show after this. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're gonna help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. Got about 30 seconds until we're back. All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. 
Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org. Welcome back here to membrane. Grayson County High School where the Cougars are about to take on Seneca. They're doing the toss right now. Kaylor, what are your keys to the game? Uh, be physical. That's the first one. And like I've said, make sure you get off to a first fast start. That's really key coming off of a bye week. If you can kind of get off of a fast start coming off of a bye week, that improves your confidence even more than it would be coming off of a regular week. Looks like the Cougars won the toss, and I'd assume that means they want the football, and it yep. does. So Grayson <laughs> County is going to start with a football. That comes up next here on K105. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. and Seneca about ready to get underway. Grayson County's going to start with a football. Sam Gormley and Kaylor Decker with you. The, the stakes are simple here tonight for Grayson County. A win, and Grayson County would clinch a home playoff game for the first time since 2014 and only the sixth time in program history. And more importantly, a win makes Grayson County mm -hmm. district champions for the first time in nine years. It's That's, been a long yeah. time, and it's something that doesn't happen often here in yep. Litchfield, and it's a huge opportunity. Seneca, though, it's play a little spoiler yep. here tonight if they Party. want to, and it is a team that definitely they have the potential to yes to play spoiler. As it's time for football in Litchfield, the kick away for Seneca will be Jorian Thomas. Well, actually, nope, somebody else is trotting out with a football, and it is instead going to be somebody else that's going to kick, and that looks like it's actually going to be number the nine. number nine. That is Kadeem Yang is going to kick. Our opening kick away, back deep to return for Grayson County, Mason Carroll and Jaron Van Meter. And the opening kick is underway by Niang. It's over to the far side of the field, takes a weird bounce, and it's going to take a bounce out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. 
Grayson County is going to get right field position to start here in this football game. Colby right. Chaffins, the junior starting quarterback, going to trot out. 47 of 91, 736 yards, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. He's rushed 60, 60 times for 253 yards and a pair of touchdowns. That doesn't count. They didn't give him a chance to return it. <sighs> yeah, in the, in the break, Kaler did call a house call. And it's not quite going to be that, but... It's a good field position anyways. Good field position at the 35-yard line. Let's see what this Grayson County offense starts off with because they've been looking really good over these previous games and it's probably not when the bye week the bye week probably came at a bad time for this offense it'll be Hanshaw on the give near side crosses the 35 gets up to about the 39 before being driven down by a couple of Seneca defenders first man in there was Curtis Allen the 6'3 390 pound defensive tackle five yard gain for Grayson County okay. the Cougars starting offense that offensive line finally has seen some continuity, yes. which has been big. You've had Woosley in there along with your seniors of Drake, Green, and Phillips. Your backfield of Van Meter, uh, Chaffins, and Hanshaw, and your, your specialist, Grayson Chaffins, Mason Carroll. You've even seen Jaden Kinney in there as a tight end. I'm going to spread it out. In the gun will go Colby Chaffins on second down and five from his own 40-yard line. Trips down here to the near side, one Wide to the right side. That's Kinney out to the right wide side of the field. Colby Chaffins steps up in the pocket, throws near sideline, pass complete, turning up field as Grayson Chaffins up the sideline, scurries up across the first down marker near midfield. That's about a 10-yard pickup and the first first down of the game for Grayson County. And that's a really good sign is seeing Colby taking what the defense just gave him and let your athlete be an athlete after the catch. First in and 10 for Grayson, placed at midfield. Cougars coached by Brian Jones. He is in his fourth year at the helm, 19 and 18 overall in his 10th season, 31 and 68. This Grayson County offense, we touched on it in the open, have scored 20 plus points in their last six games. It's the first time they've done that since 2019. Last time they went seven straight was 2014. That year just keeps yep. on coming up here. In the gun will go Chaffins. He's an offset blocker. Misdirection kept by Chaffins on the run, right across the right side. He spins down to about the 45-yard line, kind of a read option look. It might have been a direct quarterback it run. It was a corner counter gap, so they faked the run to Hanshaw and let Colby keep it with two wrapping linemen. And one of his linemen was Jaron Vanmier, who pulled as kind of an offset yep. tight end of sorts. We call those the H-backs. 10.08 left to play here in this first quarter of play. No score between Grayson County and Seneca. Cougars driving. Here to open up the game against the Red Hawks. First all-time matchup between these two teams. Grayson County has had success playing teams for the first time. Mm -hmm. They haven't lost one of those games since 2014. They've won four straight against teams when they play them for the first time. Second down and five for the Cougars. Offset eye formation. Chaffins will go under center for the first time tonight. It'll be a pitch near side to Hanshaw. Hanshaw breaks it towards the near side, crosses the 45-yard line before rolling out of bounds. At about the 43, about a two-yard pickup for Caden Hanshaw. Hanshaw inching closer to the 1,000-yard mark for his career. He entered this game 165 yards away. If he crosses that, he would become the first freshman and only the 12th player in program history to cross it. Third down and manager will come up for Grayson County, placed on the Seneca 42-yard line, third down and two. And I think Coach Jones probably called a play here knowing he has two downs. I mean, you're kind of in no man's land where a punt doesn't benefit much and you too far to kick a field goal, so I'd expect two plays here. Two wide receivers on each side, ball placed in the near hash. It's kept by Chaffins up the middle, crosses the 40-yard line, dives across the 35. That's enough for a first down, down to the 33. Nine-yard pickup on the keeper by Colby Chaffins. And Colby there, Kaler, just said, screw it, needing two downs. I'm just going to pick yeah, it up myself. I mean, that's the same play we ran while ago for about five, except uh, it looks a lot better going to the left. First down and 10 for Grayson, placed on the 33-yard line of Seneca. Good first drive of the game. See if it can end up in some points here for the orange and blue of Grayson County. Van Meter and Kinney. Well, no, no, Kinney was going to go to the right side. Now he's going to shift down here towards the near side. Van Meter all alone is an extra kind of almost in that H-back mm -hmm. position off to the right. A pair of running backs on each side of Chaffins, he's going to give it to Hanshaw, comes across the near side, gets to about the 31, about a two-yard pickup on the run for the freshman, Caden Hanshaw, as Ethan Mudd was into the game at the running back position there. And you end up actually going to officially get three down to the 30, second down and seven. Yeah, I've noticed we've gone unbalanced 
a lot this first drive, and I kind of expected that with a 3-3 stack they like to run, and we've kind of broke them out of that. Second down and seven comes up here for Grayson County. Kenny and Chaffins to the right side of the line along with Jaron Van Meter. Looks like they're dropping the cover two. It's a sweet play right side. Handshaw crosses the 25-yard line, and that's where he's going to be down by a host of Red Hawk defenders. Looks like Padre was one of the first men in there for the Red Hawks. That's about a five-yard pickup and another third down and manageable. And, Kaylor, that's what I'm liking about this drive is you're making third down and manageable. Yes. I mean, you're almost making it where it's four down territory every time. And in high school, that's very important because you don't have the kickers that you do in college or the NFL, so you need to be able to get first downs reliably. Unless you're Marshall County. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because – but they don't grow on trees. No. I'm, I'm sure Brian Jones would love a Marshall County kicker. But, I mean, uh, Lane Beasley's been great for the Cougars yeah, this he's year. He's done his job, and that's all that matters. Exactly. Uh, Kenny comes down here to the near side, two wide receivers to the right side, third down and one for Grayson County in the opening drive of the game. Kept by Chaffin's right side run outside the numbers, crosses the 20. And it's coming back. And it does look like it's coming back. Hold on the right side of the line. Might have been on Drake on the right side, I believe. It is holding called against Grayson. And we have third down and manageable. It's that's, not what you want. It's a drive killer is what it is. Let's see where they'll officially move this ball back to after every single play was going for positive yards. 6.55 left here in the first quarter of play. No score between Grayson County and Seneca. And situationally, you have to be much more smart than that. Actually, that wasn't as much of a penalty as I thought it would be. Turns out to really only be about a seven-yard penalty. So that means the hold was after the ball was already past the first down marker. So that, just, that shoots you in the foot even more. Third down and eight will come up for Grayson County. Placed on the Seneca. 32-yard line. And you can still call a lot mm -hmm. in this yeah. scenario. You can run because you're still really in four-down territory. I mean, I think without question. Trips to the near side. One wide receiver to the right side. Cougars working from right to left on your radio dial. Chaffins rolls out to the near side of the field. Keeps the eyes up. Dumps it off to Carroll. He catches it at 30. Breaks a tackle at the 25. And he's knocked out of bounds. Down to about the 21-yard line. 11-yard pickup. First down, Grayson County. That's exactly what Colby has to do. Live to play another down. And that's... That's twice now I've seen him throw it to the flats, let your athlete be an athlete, and it's amazing. That is an 11-yard pickup to Carroll, and really good job by Carroll there to Slip make the, the first man miss, yeah. and he got an extra seven yards because of it. He knew exactly where the markers were, and he wasn't going to let him stop him. And he absorbed a big hit mm -hmm. going out of bounds as well and held on to that football. Six minutes left here in this first quarter of play. No score between Grayson County and Seneca. It's in. Run near side and being driven backwards is Chaffins. He's maybe going to get one yard yeah. to the 20. Second down and nine will come up for Grayson County. A long drive here to start this game. I will say something you're going to have to take advantage of is the two big guys up front are going to have to get subbed out a lot. I know playing it that big, it's – it's not easy. I mean, you see it all the time in the NFL where they're situationally being put in. So, I mean, make it count whenever they're taken out. And, I mean, this is a big defensive line. And, I mean, it's tall, too. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, this is just a, a lanky. Because uh, they've got height on the edge mm -hmm. and everything on this 3-3 stack defense. Daring the Cougars to pass on this down. Two wide receivers on each side. Ball placed in the near hash. Second down and eight for Grayson. Just on the outer edge of the red zone. Chaffin's pump fakes. Now he's looking to scramble. Goes up the middle. Crosses the 20. Tries to curl around side to the 15 to the 10. Lowers his shoulder. Gets down inside the 10-yard line. Down to about the 7. Great run by Colby Chaffin's of a pickup of about 13 yards. Uh, that's the first time I've seen him really scramble this year inside of a clean pocket and then get out of there. And it was a great job. Yeah. He saw the hole stepping up in the pocket. He there, saw nothing there on the outside. Said, if I don't to do it myself. Four minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And honestly, I think that's showing him taking the next step. Yes. it's He's not forcing the ball into coverage anymore. He's willing to put his body on the line and run. And I, I'm i going to guess by just what I saw that we might be getting a direct snap here. And it does appear that that is uh, the case. Nope, under center. Under center will go Chaffins. A couple of shifts on the offensive line as well. Multiple shifts. They're still trying to figure out what their offensive line wants to do. Looks like it's a uh, – Unbalanced formation. Handoff, Henshaw, right side, inside the five, he's and he's down at about one. the one-yard line. About a six-yard pickup, though, for Caden Henshaw. Better hand this ball off three more times. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Just keep on giving him the ball. That's what I tell the Titans every Sunday. Except when they do that little jump pass. And even though <laughs> some teams might know it's coming, they still fall for it. And <laughs> certain opposing fans rip their hair out because even he knows it's coming. Not naming any names I, I, or anything. I, I, I 350 left to play in the first quarter. No score between Grayson County and Seneca. It'll be second and a goal from the one-yard line. Sawyer Drake in the backfield. I want to see a tush push here. Colby Chaffins under center. Chaffins will give it to Hanshaw near side. In. He's going to go in untouched. Touchdown, Cougars. Grayson County strikes first. They lead 6 to nothing with 3.30 left to play in the first quarter on a one-yard touchdown run by Caden Hanshaw. One of the most impressive things about that drive is that we took it down to three minutes as well as getting six. And we've struggled at times in the red zone, but that time it was pretty simple. 3.30 to play, a 12-play drive, 65 yards, six points. Art. Yeah, I mean, that was... And we're going to have multiple flags come in. As Seneca it. just started running in, and Brian Jones sticking both hands out. He's saying, hey, let's go for it. And that's exactly what he's going to do. I mean, Kate Hanshaw has been money in this scenario this season. Hanshaw on two-point conversions has six of them. All of them are by him. But you better believe Seneca knows that. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just, can you stop it? I mean, that's a – And I could see Caden pulling the old Chad Johnson line saying, hey, I'm going to get the ball. Stop me. Yeah. Let's see what you can do. So the ball's going to move to the one here on this two-point conversion. 3.30 left here in this first quarter of play. It's that same formation. Ethan Mudd comes off late. They're going to give it to Hanshaw. Left side bounces it out, lowers the shoulder. He's in. It's 8 to nothing. Grayson. 3.30 left in the first quarter. It's Cougar football on K105. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day. A movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Grayson County on top of this game, 8 to nothing as they drive down the field in really one of their better drives of the season, Gaylor. I, I mean, it was everything, one negative play, and it was the holding, but they made them pay. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I think it might be the best drive strictly because of how much time you chewed. Yeah, I, mean, I think you chewed about eight minutes and eight and a half minutes. Off the clock, and Seneca hasn't touched the ball, and immediately they're down not only – Six to nothing, seven to nothing, eight, eight. to nothing, yep. which is an extra thing. Lane Beasley to kick away for Seneca. Beasley's going to do an end over end oh. kick that is way out of bounds. Trainer Scott Bauman tried to jump up and grab that, but uh, Scott doesn't quite have the hops anymore. He couldn't jump up there. And yeah, grab if that was about 10, 15 years ago, he goes up with one hand and gets that. Oh, you think he's going to moss him kind of thing? Yeah, I, I, I think he goes over it. Isaac Miller. Listen, I'd like to see both of them go a little one on one or something. <laughs> go on fades. Luckily, if one of them gets hurt, they know what to do. Exactly. They know how to fix each other. <laughs> the only problem is that they both go down at the same time. Well, then I saw uh, one of the Cougar football players wants to – I think it's uh, Sawyer Drake that wants to be a sports medicine. So get, get Sawyer out there, and he, he'll fix him up. Seneca's going to have the ball on their own 35-yard line, and the quarterback will not be their starter, Jeremiah Towns. Instead, it's going to be Darion Spencer. Again, Seneca's only put in four of their six games stats-wise – and in those four games, he'd only thrown one pass, and it was incomplete, rushed two times for zero yards. So we know very little about Spencer. He's going to pass on the first play out to the far side, and it is in and out of the hands intended for Darian Lacey, and it is incomplete. He's wide open, and 
Yeah, pass just, was a little it low. Was, it was catchable, but that's that's as a quarterback, that's on you. I mean, the timing was a little off. He should turn around, and that ball should be on him. But it's also probably one of those it's, that Lacey. He's not used to throwing to these guys. I mean, he's the backup. He's not used to that. The timing is going to be different. Eight to nothing. Grayson County on top. Running back Wilson is to the right of Spencer in the backfield. Got a 3-4 look for Grayson County to start here on defense. It's pitch to the near side to Wilson. He crosses the 35, makes a man miss, and sidesteps out of bounds and crosses the 35-yard line. Weston Green was in there to make sure that he found the undefeated defender of the sideline. Yep. That is about a two-yard pickup on the sweet play. We'll pitch to Wilson. Third down and long will come up mm -hmm. here for Seneca. Yeah, it looks like about third and seven. You better use that sideline every time you get with because that running back's not small. He's a bigger he's a no. bigger kid who we do struggle with. And he uh, Terrence Wilson, he he's also a threat to catch balls mm -hmm. too in, in passing as he's their leading receiver yardage wise as well. Spencer in the gun, Wilson to him. They fake the handoff to him, throwing far side, and it's well over the head of Lacey. Incomplete, and Seneca will presumably be forced to punt. I don't know. He looks like. Yeah, they would. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he got two now. This early. It's early. You've got a good defense mm -hmm. that has played well. I mean, like we touched on, Seneca's defense last week, or last game, rather, played more, allowed 10 points. It was their fewest points allowed in a loss since before you were born, Kaler, <laughs> I would assume. In 1999, I can't imagine yeah. you were born in 1999. No, 99. no, I didn't pull a IMG Academy <laughs> or whoever that's called, Bishop Gorman. Bishop uh, Sycamore, Bishop Sycamore. High snap, taken. End over end spinning kick. Takes a bounce to the 35-yard line straight up into the air. Grayson County's going to get away from it, and it's going to turn out to be a pretty decent punt mm -hmm. as it's down at the 28-yard line of about 35 yards for Seneca. But Grayson County's offense is going to trot out onto the field. Last drive, Kaler, pretty darn good. Yeah, anytime you can take off eight minutes, you know you're doing something right. As it's 8 to nothing, Grayson County, 229 left here in this first quarter of play. Ball officially is going to be placed in the Grayson County 28-yard line. I think the biggest thing with, with Colby is he, he made good decisions throwing, made good decisions running. That was his, one of his best drives. I mean. He's looking like a much better quarterback yes. every single week, which is exactly what Brian Jones wants. Handoff, Hanshaw comes near side. He, he was hit at the line of scrimmage, dives across the 30-yard line, gets up to about the 31 yeah. or 32, about a four-yard pickup. He'll take that on first down any day of the week. And there on the tackle for Seneca was Curtis Allen. Oh, there was a penalty flag. I missed it. And it was on Grayson County, and it pushes them back. I think it had to have been a hold. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. But on the bright side, it's first down still. And that really wasn't that great of a play to begin with. As the ball's going to be placed in the 22-yard line, so it does turn out to be a 10-yard penalty. So bring up first down and 20. Should be 20, but it looks, looks a little shorter. short up there. So it's – I think it's on the 27. No, it's on the 22. I guess I must be oh, wrong. Yeah. It was the 28 beforehand. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm just losing my mind. I was looking at the wrong. They're going to set up a screen right up the middle to Hanshaw. He bounces it towards the near side at the 20, crosses the 25, gets up to the 30. That's a nice job getting pretty much to where they were. Yeah, actually, it's Pat Farther. As they get up to the 34-yard line, so they do get two extra yards. So it'll bring up second down and about three or four coming up here for Grayson County. About 90 seconds left in this opening quarter of play. Cougars up 8-0. to zero. Now you got the young cheerleaders here tonight as well, Kaler. They're out there helping. Uh, I'm sure we'll get some shots of them at some point. Yep. Can't really put young football players out there to be a bad recipe. They had junior pro night, though, here a couple <laughs> of weeks ago, which they got to run onto the field, I know. Chaffin's up the middle, crosses the 35-yard line, gets up to the 40. Down. That'll be enough for a first down. Colby's running hard today. Yes. It's a pickup of six yards, first down Grayson County. And what's really ironic is he uh, told me this week during practice that he's a, he's a safe runner and he gets down. I'm like, Colby, I've watched you every game. You've never gotten down. <laughs> That's tough, though. I know that's really tough it as a is. quarterback because you want to get those extra the only, two yards. The only game I did it was against Owensboro. Where you went down? Yeah. That's probably uh, – it's called uh, self-preservation. Yeah, that one was. It wasn't the playoff game, so I was like, I'm just going to down. And I kind of regretted it because I slid on turf and I didn't realize how much 
That hurt. First down and 10. Looks like we're, uh, might be unbalanced again. To Offset eye formation here on one of the final plays of this first half. Well, Rolling yeah. down to the near side comes Hanshaw, crosses the 40-yard line, and he's going to go out of bounds at about the 43. A couple of yard pickup there for Caden Hanshaw. And the clock will not, since it went out of bounds, we are going to have at least one more play of this quarter. Four-yard gain, five, four. I think it's four. Should be. Yeah. Second down and six. The ball goes up to the 44 on the run there for Caden Hanshaw. Eight to zero. Cougs on top. Bring up second down and six. Almost here, you can almost call like a little shot play here before before the end of the quarter. It's a good time to. Um, second and six, so you're still manageable. You're yeah. moving the ball. Really, you're in four down territory too. Yeah, I mean, right before the half. Probably not in uh, this formation. Quarter. In the eye will go Grayson, and that'll be a false start called on Sawyer Drake. And no, uh, that's Hoobery. Caleb Hoobery. It was Caleb Hoobery there at left tackle. And Colby Chaffins, <laughs> not too thrilled. No. Because now I don't think you call a shock play. I think now that you're at you're second and 11, yeah. I think you're probably running, screen, and get yourself to the end of the quarter with that 8 to nothing lead. Little fun fact, I got called for a false start. I think I remember that. Against Graves County. And you did, didn't you? Mm-hmm. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, quarterback is hard to get a false start <laughs> called on you. Run, near side comes Hanshaw, crosses the 40-yard line. He's going to be arm tackled at about the 42. That'll be the final play, presumably, of this first quarter of play. Grayson County leads Seneca 8-0. Brian Jones going to bring his team to the huddle, and that'll bring us to the end of the quarter. It's 8-0 Grayson. Second quarter comes up next here on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Grayson County on top, 8-0 to as we start the second quarter of play here from Grayson County High School. Sam Gormley and Kaylor Decker with you. And Keith Eckloff, the head coach for uh, Seneca, is having an extended conversation with one of the officials during this commercial. And during the timeout, and I, I don't really know what it might be about. I'm, I'm doubting it's a, hey, how you doing? Uh, you want to go? Uh, Eat after this. Yeah, you want to go to the local restaurant or something after the game. Yeah, it's definitely not. He's clearly unhappy about something. The third down in about eight for Grayson County to start this quarter, placed on the their own 43-yard line. Scott Mann. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side. It's a, a run near side to Van Meter. Ball comes out, loose ball, and looks like Seneca has it. In fact, they do in running up the far side of the field. Jaron Van Meter, that ball just popped out and went squirting the other way. Seneca has it, runs it up to the far side, and that's going to be a turnover here on this first drive of the game. I mean, that was a – it's just a perfect hit. I mean, the helmet goes on the hand. It's hard to keep it there. So Seneca is going to have the ball placed on their own 49-yard line. Eleven fifty to go here in this quarter. 
It's be interesting here to see how this Grayson County defense goes. Is I know Kaylor, you you like to use that they're uh, you know the what yep. the, the firefighters here. Yeah, putting out the fire. Sweet play near side, trying to find space as Julu. He runs up and he was hit hard immediately as I mean Braden Mud curling around the edge made contact with Julu and slows him down to only pick up one yard on the run. I think it was the senior Mud that kind of curled around and made a really nice hit low. It was Braden Mud. Second down and nine. Seneca going a little up tempo. Not necessarily true like you're Tennessee, but yeah. they're not huddling by any means either. And maybe that works better for them. Trips to the right side, one wide receiver here to the near side. Julu curls around. It is going to be a pitch play to Julu on the near side. He crosses the 50, and that's immediately where he's slung out of bounds. He went sliding down hard. Mason Carroll in there on the tackle along with Conrad Raymond. There'll be a pickup of one yard down to the 49-yard line. And that was not necessarily a trick play, but it was just an option. It, it, was, what it was, but came from the, the slot, which you don't mm -hmm. always see, and he kind of curled around. Grace County did a good job staying at home, making sure they didn't get fooled by a... Yeah, and that's, that's where benefiting from practicing for number three to be in the game kind of helped. Because Towns is a great runner. Slapping the hands once, rolling out to the far side of the field is Spencer. Now he's going to let it fly over far side. Incomplete diving attempt on the backside, almost made by Wilson. He couldn't get there in time. It'll be fourth down and nine. This will be an interesting decision here for Seneca. Uh, I think you almost go for this. I think you do. You're fourth down and... But then again, your offense hasn't done much. Well, now they're moving. It's, yeah, they, your they, offense really hasn't done much. Fourth and nine, it does look like they're... Quarterback's coming off the field. Yeah, because you got lucky with that last possession. And they are going to punt. Because Jaron had the first down. He just coughed it up, which is rare to him for him to make a mistake. I think, is it not the first fumble of the season? <laughs> it, it, if it's, it, if it's not, of, it's, Off the top of my head, it might be. If it's not, it's one of the very few. It's definitely Jaron's first, I can tell you that. Here comes the punt from Niang. Gets it away. It's a line drive kick. Takes a bounce at 30. Picked up by, by Mason Carroll at the 30. He comes up the near sideline to the 45-50. Crosses down into positive territory. Down to the 45-yard line. A really risky run by Mason Carroll, but he turns it into a 25-yard punt return. It was like what we saw with Grayson. That, or was that Caden? Caden, last, yeah. uh, last game. Where he just caught it and was like, okay, there's nobody in front of me. But you, you better get something <laughs> on that or you're going <laughs> to be here. If you do it, you better have the ball and you better make sure you get something with it. Grayson County going to have it at their own, or the Seneca 43-yard line. And, ah, penalty on the return on Grayson County. He's going to end up pushing the ball back into Grayson County territory. I missed, our official's quick to deliver the penalty, so I missed as to what it might have been on. Still get the ball at the 40, so it was like a nine-yard punt. <laughs> so, I mean, 41 is where the ball will be. It was a... So it turns out that Carroll, I think he picked it up at about the 25, so 16 yards. Yeah. You can give him that, which makes sense because he got about 26 on the return, so you give him 10 back. Um, so that makes about sense. So Grace County going to have it. The offense looked good today. Yeah. Have it first down and 10, 10 22 to play in the first half. A running back on each side of the junior quarterback, Colby Chaffins. Handshaw, sweet play left side, crosses the 40 yard line, lowers the shoulder, and gets up to about the 40. Four on the run. Bring up second down at about seven for Grayson County. Nice run there for uh, just getting, you know. It was a hard run. No, I mean, yeah, that's. Get, getting three. That was a three yard run with a 10 yard effort. Second down and seven here for Grayson County. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. It's eight to nothing. Cougs on top trying to clinch their first district championship since 2014. Here against a Seneca team for the first all-time matchup. Hanshaw comes near side this time to the 45, to the 50, breaks a tackle, bounces off men as he crosses the 45-yard line, down to about the 41. Biggest run of the game for Caden Hanshaw. Give him about 15 on the run. First down, Grayson County into positive territory. He was just bouncing off of players mm -hmm. like a bowling ball. Hey, and that's... It's rare for a player like him to do that because he is more of a quicker, make-you-miss guy, and he, he has that ability to run through you if he really wants. Ethan Mudd is probably more of your, I'm going to run you over. Yeah. Whereas Hanshaw, and now we're going to have a timeout. 
uh, I Seneca. believe, take, taken by Seneca on the far side of the field. Nine minutes and 23 seconds to play here in this opening half. As I do know, it is the small cheerleaders are out here tonight. I know that they had a uh, they had a camp a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure maybe we can uh, get a camera on, on the cheerleaders and we can we can show you off as they're doing a, a cheer right now as um, they're cheering it out. Maybe we can even get one that goes on the front side to see some of the faces instead of from the back. As uh, they're, uh, they had a camp, Kaylor, a couple of weeks ago, and they've gotten the opportunity now to, because of that, to get out there in person uh, and cheer out onto the field. Um, I know that there's at least one familiar face that I know down there, and I'm looking for her, but I don't see her down there. As I know Alea, who watches our broadcast sometimes, uh, she is down there somewhere, but I don't see her. I've done a couple of scan throughs, so maybe I'm going blind, <laughs> which is very, very possible. possible. Out of this timeout, Grayson County's going to have it first down and 10. Wide receiver to the left, and uh, you got an H back to the left as well. A pair of running backs on each side of Chaffins. He spins around, gives it to Hanshaw, ball comes out, looks like no, it's still alive, and Grayson County's gonna end up getting it back. Chaffins got it. As a, kind of a weird handoff there, and the ball was never into Hanshaw's hands, but a second straight fumble. Grayson luckily falls on it this time as Colby Chaffins got it back after a Seneca player, Nyang, had it. Lost it. Chafin smartly that's, just fell back on it. Lost a 10. That's the uh, – we put that play in this week, and I think it actually got put in either Wednesday or yesterday. And you can tell it's new. The footwork on it's new. The mesh points are new. I mean, and that happens. It, it's, it's the harsh reality of being a quarterback. You're going to fumble an exchange at one point or another. Pair of wide receivers on each side. Second down and 20 for Grayson. 9.06 to play in the first quarter. 8 to nothing. Grayson counting on top. Chaffins, three-step drop, steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to look to scramble, crosses the 50-yard line, bounces it outside to the 45, lowers his shoulder, gets down to about the 43. Kaylor, that's probably one of those plays you were talking about that Colby probably should have just gone yeah, out at the 45 and not gotten hit. Yeah. Um, I get what he's trying to do, but you didn't really have more e he yards got to get. An extra yard. Maybe. Yeah, and that's not worth it. There's a flag on the play, too, and it's a holding on Grayson County, so it ends up meaning even less that it matters because Grayson now, this is going to turn into – Second down and a country mile. Probably 30. I would expect a screen at some it point. It's going to be back to the 39, so it'll be second down and 30 for Grayson County. But when Colby sees that they're going man, he is much more of a threat to scramble because there is no man for the quarterback at that point. Ethan Mudd is going to come into the game. And I think Jaron's going to go to quarterback here. Chaffins is on the sideline briefly, so you are correct that little Wildcat. You got Van Meter, Hanshaw, and Mud in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the left side, one here to the near side. Seneca showing blitz up the far side. Van Meter rushes that way, crosses the 40-yard line, and he's going to be dropped at about the 41, three or two-yard pickup on the run there for Jaron Van Meter, with eight minutes to go here in this third quarter, in this second quarter of play. Eight to nothing, Grayson. And are we going to keep with the Wildcat? I doubt it. Chaffin's still on the sideline. His helmet is not on. And now it looks like he is going to come into the game. Screen on third down and 27. Yeah. <laughs> that or... Some. Hail Mary? No. <laughs> not at this point in the game. That's what I do when I'm playing Madden at home. Ah, that's why I hate Madden. It's... <laughs> So unrealistic. And just go deep to Jamar Chase. Touchdown every time. Well, the Titans, you can't do that. You have to, use, you have to, run, the, you have to run the ball. Trips to the left side. One wide receiver here to the near side. Chaffins back into the game. Hanshaw is to his left. Chaffins rolls out to the far side of the field on third down and long and throws it off. It's complete at the 50-yard line to Van Meter. Well short of the sticks. Nine-yard pass completion, and Grayson County will presumably be forced to punt yeah, on I mean, fourth down and 19. I can't imagine that you'd be going for it in this scenario. Your defense is playing well. I don't know that they're playing that well. Yeah. And again, Colby Chaffin's still on the field. 
I, th I think Jones is going to drain this clock as much as he can and call him out. 6.40 and counting to play in the first half. And that appears to be exactly what he will do. And if it is, we will take that timeout with him. He's waiting. 6.24 and counting. Official hasn't put the hand up yet. Man, this clock, this is the longest play clock of all time, Kaler. Is it not, or am I a little crazy? <laughs> he still hasn't put it up yet. Does he realize that he, okay. Now they're going to stop the clock. Timeout, Grayson County, 6.09 to play here in this second quarter of play. Grayson County up 8 to nothing. This is Cougar Football on K105. simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Grayson County on top, 8 to nothing, 6.09 to play in this first half of play. Got the cheerleaders out here. They're cheering on. It'll be Grayson County to punt. Lane Beasley on fourth down and 19. Good snap. Beasley does get it away just barely, and it's a pretty good punt. And it is going to be he runs in him. and ends up hitting a Seneca player at the 20-yard line and falling on top of it. Saving it was Isaiah Jackson. It did hit the player mm -hmm. on, the, on the leg, and it's probably one of those. I know you all have the word. What's the word? Uh, Peter. Peter, yeah, get out of the way, pretty mm -hmm. much saying. And Seneca clearly doesn't have something like that, especially right in front of their bench. That was almost giving yeah. Grayson County the ball in the red zone. At least ball something. I mean. Get away. Get out of the way. Get Say it, something. Get it, yeah. Move. I mean, anything. Seneca's going to have the ball, thankfully for them, at their own 18-yard line. That was a good punt, though. With 6.01 to play in this first half. So Lane Beasley's punt turns out to be 32 yards. It almost was 32 <laughs> yards and, a, and the football. Yeah, 32-yard pass. Spencer remains into the game at quarterback. Got a new running back into the game as well for Seneca. Two wide receivers on the, niche, on the near side of the field. Direct run up the middle, crossing the 20 or getting up to the 20-yard line and being dropped on the play after he picked up a one yard, actually only to the 19 on the run. Looks like they gave him to 20. They did end up giving him to the 20. That's a two-yard pickup. Ethan Mudd in on the tackle for Grayson County. 540 left here in this opening half of play. From Grayson County High School, Cougars looking for their first district championship since 2014 with a win tonight. They scored on their opening drive of the game, a 12-play drive that went 65 yards, eight and a half minutes, and ended with a one-yard touchdown run by Caden Hanshaw. A pair of wide receivers on, the, on the, each side of Spencer. False start. Three-step drop, and it is a false start called against the Red Hawks, and that's going to push them backwards back to the 15-yard line. And now this is you're, you're in a weird position here if you're Seneca. You're at second and 13, 517 to go. You're deep in your own territory. Yeah. You're, you're, it's a weird place to be. You almost have to get a first down to keep this clock moving because you give the ball back with really good field position if you don't get it. And you've not truly stopped them yet. You've got a turnover and then the penalties that kind of sat us back. So, I mean, you better offense, better start clicking. Second down and long for Seneca. Spencer to pass, throwing it. It is complete. Immediately hit his Julu. Breaks through the tackle and runs backwards and ends up, I mean, he would have had about maybe five, five and instead hours. is only going to get about three. And Seneca... I believe called timeout on that far side. At least I saw. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Thrown right in the middle of the mass. Man. You would imagine. It's but it was thrown by the. 
did they, did you see a signal? It was oh, I see. It was an eligible receiver downfield. The official kind of hides. He's got the white hat on the white jerseys, and he keeps blending in. Man, I think he wants them to push back. Since the clock will stop. I mean, I like that. Push him back. The clock's going to stop. Ball's going to move back now to the 12-yard line. Second and an 18 will come up here for Seneca. And now, I mean, 4.33. Count it. Clock is running. 4.33 to go. I, I mean, I if you're Seneca, you got to be almost, careful. You almost got to run the ball, I think. Mm -hmm. It's 8 to nothing. Spencer rolls out to the far side, now goes back to the near side. Pass complete to Wilson on a screen play, and Wilson is wrapped up as he crosses the 15. The pile pushes him across the 20, gets him up to the 21. Nine-yard pickup there on the turn back, and you've got two Seneca players down after the play. One, a non-contact way back, one of the receivers, Julu, and then a blocker in the middle. That is Lacey. Those are two of their top wideouts. That's... That's typically a bad sign. You see non-contact, especially with an ankle. Both of them are up and walking off on their own power, although both very gingerly. Mm -hmm. 4.06 to play here in this first half. It's 8 to nothing. Grayson County on top. Balls moved up to the 21-yard line. Third down and seven will come up here for the Red Hawks. And this is an interesting decision here, too. Yeah. Um... I mean, your passing game has not looked great. Even when you get completions, they're very short. So I don't know. And you have a backup quarterback in the game. Exactly. So, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to put on him. Because you're in pick six territory as well. Rolling out to the far side is Spencer. Keeps the eyes up, has a blocker in front of him, now looks to throw. Intercepted by Conrad Raymond. He's to the 30-yard line, to the 25, being driven backwards. Interception for Grayson County. And the Cougs will have the ball with great field position. You about called two in a row. You got the pick part right. I did. Not quite the pick six, but it's not quite as good as my one at Bullet Central. <laughs> that one was... Why I didn't go buy a lottery ticket after oh, the yeah, game, that I don't one, know. That one was point and dead center. Ball's at the 25-yard line. Maybe I should just start picking a uh, touchdown Jaron Van Meter here. Okay. I'm gonna, let's let's see what we can do. And if, it, if, if I hit this, I might go, just put the headset off and retire. Hit the, go hit the power ball. Uh, there was a guy in California hit it for about over a billion. That'd be pretty nice. Yeah. Now he probably will be broke in a year or two. Listen, I, I, I'd let that run at least three or four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the quarterbacks are safety, too. Chapin's in the shotgun formation with a pair of wide receivers on each side of him. It's a run to Hanshaw, near side, looking for space, crosses the 25-yard line, tries to hurdle a man, does so, and pays the price in the uh, in the process, gets to about the 22-yard line. Three-yard pickup. Never really got the edge sealed on that play, and that's – if you're going to be able to run stretch on an athlete like this, you got to be able to block on the perimeter, and I don't think we've done a great job of that tonight. Not horrible, but it's not been – good either. Eight to nothing. Grayson County on top. 320 left in this first half of play. Cougars looking to win the district championship tonight against a solid Seneca team. Two wide receivers to the left. One wide receiver here to the near side. Kept by Chaffins on the read option. The left side run. Crosses the 20. Lowers the shoulder. Ball oh. comes out. He had it stripped inside the 15-yard line, and it looks like it is recovered by Seneca. A red zone, well, I guess it's technically not a red zone fumble. He entered the red zone on that run, but you would have had the ball down at about the 15, in between the 15 and the 10, and instead Seneca has the ball back with three minutes left. That's three in the first half. And I'm not sure, Caitlin. Uh, you've got to, you have to now know at this point, you should have known after the first one, but they're stripping at the ball. I mean, they are going to go hard, especially with the offense that's struggling. They want the ball every chance they can get. So, I mean, I don't care what's going on. You have two hands on that ball. I don't care if you're at the one-yard line. Until you're in the end zone, two hands don't come off. First down and 10. Seneca's offense has had absolutely no success running the ball at or passing the ball, really doing anything. Is There's a run right side. Looked like it might have been Martin on the carry to the right side of the field. It was either Martin or Mays. It was Mays, or Martin, rather, on the run. He carries it up to about the 19-yard line. Five-yard pickup, though. That's one of the biggest plays of the game mm -hmm. for Seneca so far. And, I mean, they got 
they don't have time to go five yards all the way down the field, though. So, I mean, they've got to hit some shots. Two and a half to play here in this first half of play. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Spencer. False start again. False start. It was on that far side. And I like uh, Martin, the running back. Hey, he just, just kept on running. He just, said, oh, just in oh, case. Oh, you just know. in case it wasn't dead. And I'll move it back. And when your offense is struggling, those are the penalties mm -hmm. that, that drive a head coach crazy. They keep an offense struggling. Keith they, Eckloff, the head coach, was formerly the offensive coordinator at Mail. And he's an offensive mind, and that, I mean, it just it just kills a team. It breaks every sense of rhythm that you do have. Second down and about 10. Throwing near side, throwing it up, and it is incomplete. Mason Carroll in there on coverage. So the pass was intended for Sese down the near side of the field. Carroll in coverage. Carroll was asking the official for a push off on OPI. And it wasn't going to get it. Yeah, it's hard to see from our angle. So, I mean, you can't really. Brian Jones, the sideline, didn't seem to complain. But that's like a true DB. If you think he had a chance at a pick. Yeah, it's, uh, it's offensive pitch. Yeah, appearance. absolutely. That's the reason why he didn't get it. Uh, Coach Jones might also not complain simply because it's incomplete. 2.04 to play here in this first half of play. Third down and 10. I think you got to run it here if you're Seneca. It's Force the timeout. Yeah, and it is it a is. direct run near side and hurdling yep. a man. Penalty flag comes in. Uh, hurdling is illegal. You can't hurdle. And it's up to about the 14-yard line. We'll see what this penalty flag is. It is a hold called against Seneca, and I think you decline this if you're Grayson County. Do you not? Yep, he's declining it. And it is, and I think that's the right call because you're looking at fourth down. And I don't know if they changed the rule, but hurdling used to be illegal. Yeah, because you'd have hurdled every guy you'd have gone up against, right? Oh, yeah. And that would have broke my neck. <laughs> Looking like Will Levis against Louisville. <laughs> because I remember against Butler County one year, they one of their guys hurdled and it was a penalty, but they might have changed the rule. Personally, I don't mind it. Like, if you can hurdle. Because Hanshaw just hurdled yeah, two on Yeah, I was about to say, if you can hurdle, hurdle, I don't care. You're just going to maybe hurt yourself. Yeah, I mean. The punter will stand back at the goal line to punt this away. Van Meter stands back at the Seneca 44. 158 to go here in this first half of play. And it's not a great snap. Niang gets it away. It's a spinning kick that takes a Grayson County bounce to the 39-yard line, and it's going to be picked up. Should be at about the 37 is yes. where the ball should be placed. And you have a two-minute drive here with yep. 150 to go. With at the 37, two timeouts, you have more than enough time to do anything you want. Run, you can do anything. Yeah, I mean, you can attack the middle of the field still. What are you calling first play here? You're, if you're offensive coordinator, Kaylor Decker. Uh, first play, they've been running a lot of man, so I'd kind of like to see like a hitch-hitch corner concept out of trips. You see one running back, trips to the left side. Kenny down here to the near side, ball placed in the near hash. Grayson working from left to right, first down and 10. Place the own 37-yard line. And multiple penalty flags come in, and I think this one's going to move Grayson County back. Uh, and it this is. This has just not been a very clean game. On either side. And there's been something that really Grayson County, if there is a negative on how they've played uh, in district penalties. play, it has been. And it's been penalties that are controllable penalties. Yeah, that's – holds happen. Not at this rate, but they happen. Like, you'll get one every three to four drives. False starts should never happen. Uh, unnecessary personal fouls, those should never. Face mask, you'll accidentally grab a guy up high one time. I mean, that's reasonable. But uh, everything after the whistle or before the whistle, completely controllable. First down and 15 for Grayson. The ball pushes back to the Seneca 42-yard line. It's kept by Chaffins up the middle, crosses the 40-yard line. Space to work, crosses the 35-30. Blocker in front of him to the 20, 15, 10, and he's brought down out of bounds. Great big run by Colby Chaffins. Officially, the ball goes down to the 12-yard line, 30 yards on the run by Chaffins. Now what think, a read. Yeah, uh, it wasn't a read again. It, it was just once again one of those counter gap plays where we stick it in the stomach of Hanshaw and got two guys wrapping around to the other side. Timeout taken 
I, did I see a timeout taken? No. I don't okay, know I think what he was happened. just. <laughs> he maybe, was looking at us and he, saying, "Stop the clock." So I guess maybe they just said, "Stop the clock," because the ball went out of bounds. Yeah. I think now here you got to think about slowing down a little. But then again, Seneca hasn't <laughs> shown that's that true. they can score. That's true. But you have to think about with athletes of their caliber. I mean, Seneca right now has not picked up a first down in yeah. the first half. It'd be a bad time to. And the gun goes Chaffins. You can run the ball now, and I think you will. Oh, yeah. With a minute and a half to go in this first half of play. Be run, Hanshaw left side. He's inside the five. He's going to go in the end zone. Is he down to the goal line? No, he's one. down to the one. Pickup of 11 yards on the run by Caden Hanshaw. I thought he had more of the edge than he did. He was kind of running with one yeah. Seneca player, and that one player slowed him down just enough for one of his buddies to come help him out. He's in there on the tackle was Wilson. Grayson did a really good job blocking Max out on that play. I mean, he had the corner all the way out of bounds to where he couldn't even affect the play. 115 and counting to play in the first half, and I think this is one of these that you probably take the time all the way down. Yeah, you can. I mean, if you don't get it here, you have a timeout to fall back on. Got a pair of them. Yeah. Can't take them with you either. No. I we mean, got so. uh, the power eye coming. It's kept by Chaffin's quarterback sneak left side, and he is – Waiting for a signal in the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. One-yard touchdown run by Colby Chaffins, and Grayson County has a 14-0 lead with 49.4 seconds to play in this first half of play. Yep. It'll be Lane Beasley on to attempt the extra point. Van Meter is the holder, and we're going to get another free one. And immediately the offense goes yep. back out on the field. As you should. I, lo I love what I saw there from the offense. Mason Carroll, he got sent back, but he immediately, when he saw that, he immediately ran back out on the field because he knows that this now means that Grace is going to get a chance to go up 16 to nothing. I would expect the same formation we just scored out of. I mean, they've... They'd give it to Caden this time, they, maybe. They've not stopped us. Give it to Sawyer. <laughs> Let the big boy it's eat. senior night. Listen, he, if there's one man on this team that deserves a touchdown... Uh, he gets a two-point conversion for this. Not quite a touchdown. Yeah, but... Uh, it, it's the same concept. He gets across the goal line. It, in 30 years, he'll tell you it was a touchdown. <laughs> Jafin's under center on the two-point conversion attempt. It's going to be to Hanshaw, left side. He's got it. Two-point conversion, good. 49.4 seconds to play in the first half. Grayson County on top. 16-0. to This is Cougar Football on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. Grayson getting on top 16 to nothing in this game against Seneca. 49.4 seconds to play in the first half. And go the one side kick here, Kaylor. Eh, I don't know about it. I don't think it will here. 49.4. Try and go throw another one in. No, they're going to kick it deep. I don't blame it's them. It's of, over the head, and uh, it is bounce. out of bounds. That's the second one that Beasley's put out of bounds. I will say... The thing I was most impressed by is, you remember the last drive, got all the way down to the red zone, Colby fumbles. Very next drive, scores. On a almost run. all of his legs. I mean, you had a one run of 11 yards for Hanshaw, but other than that, it was all Colby mm -hmm. on the running. He had 30 of those yards on that drive. 
So Seneca's going to get it. And they have it at the 35. You've got two timeouts. 49.4. It's not unheard of. No. And like you said, you touched on it a few minutes ago. They've got great athletes. Yeah. And when you've got great athletes. You have big shot potential. You do. If anything, just get one of them in space. They make a man miss. And next <laughs> thing you know. You're off to the races. Set up. Stepping up in the pocket. Throwing it up. Going to give one of those men a chance. And it is incomplete. Intended down the near side of the field for Lacey. Mason Carroll in there on coverage. And it's exactly what, I mean, why not? They took a shot, didn't work, and. You have nothing to lose. You're down 16 to nothing. You do get the ball to start the exactly. second half, so you don't want to be too aggressive. And chances are on these shot plays down the sideline, if it's picked, it's not getting back. It's because you're going to have to go up in the air, high point it more often than not, fall trying to catch it. So, I mean, it's worth a shot every time. Second and ten. No, that's definitely a false start. Uh, yeah, I just – this – I don't know if it's a cadence thing with the backup quarterback or – because it seems like the center is snapping it late and everybody else is going. Second down and 15. Or maybe the center was the only one that knew the snap count. Uh, how's the clock starting? Run right side by Martin. He breaks through, crosses the 35, gets up to the 40. Big run there for Seneca. And 20 seconds and counting, and they might just take this one to halftime. It's a 10-yard run there for Martin. Looks like they're going to hurry up, maybe run one more play, maybe throw one to the end zone here on third down and five. Why not? He doesn't have a small arm. I mean, I saw him throwing before the Eight game. seconds and counting, and now we're going to have a timeout taken by Seneca with 7.2 seconds on the clock. And I think the coach is saying, hey, the clock's running. Like you, yeah. You can't take all the time. No, you gotta, you gotta get it off. Seven point two, and I think honestly, if I was Seneca at that point, just, just let it run down, take it with three, yeah. and let's just, That's, let's see what we can't do. But I get trying to take one more shot. At the same time, if it's already ran down that much, I don't think it's worth it. Because you also want to be careful. You never know. If it gets <laughs> to be fourth down here, yeah. Mind you, my call timeout. You got. A great punt returner in Jaron Van Meter. And two, you can just bring the house and try and block a punt. Mm -hmm. Grace again, he's done that this year. Grace and Chaffins yep. had the block punt return for a touchdown against Butler County, if I'm not reason. Yep. No, uh, I think it was. McLean County. McLean. It yep. was against McLean County. I wish it was against Butler. <laughs> I know you, you love Butler County. I do. I heard you're getting a tattoo, right? You're going to add that to your uh -huh. slave, sleeve mm -hmm. of the bear? Yep. Third and five. To pass is Spencer. He steps up. He's going to let it fly down the seam, and it is overthrown and intercepted by Van Meter, and he's immediately dropped inside the 20-yard line. That's the second interception of the game for Grayson County, and another. That's 100 bucks 100 today. bucks donated by Sheriff Norman Chaffins to the Cougar football program. That is now $550 donated by the Sheriff to the program. But more importantly, Grayson County is up 16 to nothing at the half. We'll take a break. Did you have some? No. No, I thought you had something that you wanted to add there. We'll take a break. 16 nothing. Grayson County up at the half. It's Scooter Football on K105. The governor has declared the state of emergency. An evacuation is now underway as the storm approaches. The National Weather Service has issued a warning as it monitors the storm. The following counties there are Convoy of Hope is ready to help you prepare for the next storm. Visit convoy.org slash prepare. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we got to operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. 
Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Cougar football on K105. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are on top of Seneca at the half by a score of 16-0. Sam and Kaler back here with you. And Kaler, that first half of play, I think if you're Brian Jones, you saw some good things. <laughs> Yeah. And you had some penalties that have really kept this, kept Seneca in the game. Yeah, you had penalties and turnovers that were huge. Um, I think that's really the only negative thing to come out of the first half. You executed well when you didn't shoot yourself in the foot. pair of interceptions on defense as Van Meter had one, his third of the season, and Conrad Raymond had his first career one as well to put Grayson Kenny up 16-0. to Like you touched on, a pair of fumbles mm -hmm. in that first half, something that – I'd have to go back and look. I'm not sure Grayson County has fumbled. If they have, it's only been one, maybe two times this season. Something that they've prided themselves on this year, and it has, without question, been a disappointment yeah. uh, here today. But you say all that, and Grayson County's up 16-0. Yeah. to zero. And hats off to Seneca for attacking the ball, though. I mean, that's well-coached football. First guy stains him up, second guy comes in there with her claw almost and rips at the ball, and you just hope you get it out, and they have. Grayson County on top 16-0. To Coming up next, we'll have our Cougar Conversation segment. And you can see them right now on the field. Grayson County Band has a big competition hosted here. In fact, it's like the largest competition in the state this year. That will be happening here as 20 bands plus Grayson County will be playing here in less than 24 hours. So we'll tell you more about that coming up as we're going to sit down with the Bells after this and learn more about uh, the pork chop sandwich. Caleb, I'm not sure if you've ever had one of those, but uh, no. the Cougar Band pork, ooh, you are missing out. It is quite delicious. It's worth the $10 to get in just to get the, the chance to buy that tomorrow. So we'll take a break and hear from the Bells in our Cougar Conversation segment after this. Again, your score at the half, Grayson County 16, Seneca 0. This is Cougar Football on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day. A movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Welcome back to the Halftime Show here on K105. Sam Gormley now joined by the Bells for from the Grayson County Band as we get ready for their big home show tomorrow. And I, I wanted to first start before we get into the home show is just band in general. 
And Aaron, let's start with, I think most people know that they see the football team out practicing and they know that they practice throughout the week to get ready for their game. You all do the same exact thing where you're practicing getting ready for your games that were on Saturdays for competitions. What is a typical practice week like? Uh, we practice, I try to limit it to about eight hours on school nights. And then on weekends, we, we get a lot more time in on the weekends. But, um, you know, we'll, we, we do a lot of dividing up um, sections and subsections to, to, you know, isolate things that each individual needs. And then we try to put uh, have some ensemble, ensemble time together to put everything together. Um, you know, towards the end of the week, Thursdays, Fridays, that's when we typically use time for ensemble time. I know this year's show, I, I've gotten to hear, and I like it because when we're setting up on Fridays for our broadcast, we hear you all practicing. So I get little bits stuck in my head that because you all are practicing different parts of it. What is this year's show and what is the theme, Ashley? It's called Luna Rosa, which in English, of course, is Red Moon. So the show kind of starts with the, what we would all consider a regular moon, silvery, whites, very bright. And actually, the show kind of turns kind of dark towards the end. So by the end of the show, everything is on the field is red. Um, the, the kids even have something on their uniform that will turn to red. The white moon that our football crowd will see kind of on side, we call it side one, um, it's going to turn red at the end, all of our – Crescent moons on the field turn red, um, so it's called Luna Rosa, Red Moon. This season, I know you all have traveled all over the country, we could even say. You even had into Ohio. Aaron, what have been some of your results from the year so far? We've had a great year. Of course, um, yeah, it's um, w the results haven't been the same as past years, but we've gone against harder competition this year. Like you said, we've gone against bands from – all over, you know, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee. We're going to Tennessee in a couple of weeks, and we're going to see a lot of great bands down there too. So uh, we're, we're not as much results-oriented right now, but uh, on October 28th when we have our semifinals, uh, state semifinals, then uh, obviously we'll be geared towards that. That's our end goal. Tomorrow you have your annual home show. Ashley, for someone who is hearing this right now, and they're watching because they're here for the football game, and they, they don't really know anything about band or anything, can you explain to them what is a home show? Well, just like the football team preps all year for their football games, these kids all over the, the country, of course, but in Kentucky are preparing for, we're going into regional competition weekend. So one weekend before regional competition is this weekend. And so we are hosting a home show where other bands come to our campus to compete. So there's a total of 20 different bands from all over the state of Kentucky coming to our campus. We will host them. They compete here. We have an incredible panel of judges hired for them. Um, and so we're going to host here on our campus tomorrow, 20 bands. We're, we make 21, so 21 total bands will be performing tomorrow. Now, I know this is a big fundraiser for the band as well, and I think when people hear fundraiser, they want to know, what are you using the money for? So what does some of this money go towards? Well, it goes directly back to the kids, providing opportunities for them, and, and specifically towards the show, Luna Rosa. We're still you know, trying to develop new ideas. We're still trying to light up the moon that Miss Bell was talking about. We're uh, providing opportunities. We are in November going to perform at Lucas Oil Stadium where the Colts play, and that's going to have to be an overnight trip. So that's also going to provide housing for our kids for that, that weekend. I know one of the cool aspects about the home show is you all have an award that is at most competitions, but you all have it specifically named for a certain person and it is the Mr. Spirit Award. Can you tell me about that? Yes, sure. We have somebody in the um, box up here. We have someone specified. And they basically watch the band's interactions all day long, like from their crowd to the students coming on the field to their, their staff and how well we all interact and support one another. And then so we give an overall Spirit Award, which, of course, is in honor of Mr. McGee. And he comes and presents the trophy. And uh, it's always close to his birthday, so we usually try to work out something special for him, too. It's a really good night, and I know i got to ask, pork chop sandwiches? Absolutely, as many as you want. <laughs> and listen, and, and that's the thing, if you've never had one of those, it's worth the price of admission to come in and be able to get the opportunity to purchase that. What time does everything start? I don't know which one I'll go to on this. Which time? What time does everything start? How do people come? How does it all work? Who wants it? I think 1.30 is senior recognition. I hope I'm not wrong. 1.30 senior recognition followed by the Star Spangled Banner, which has been playing by one of our very own student groups. It's a small uh, quartet. They sound amazing. And then I think the first band takes the field at 2 p.m. 
uh, admission is $10 at the gate, five and under, I believe, are free. And um, concessions all around, lots and lots of food, and of course, the pork chops, yes. It's all you need. Make sure to come out and support the Grayson County High School Band this weekend on Saturday for their annual home show. We'll take a break, come back with more on the halftime show after this, as this is Cougar Football on K105. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we got to operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Plant is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Plant team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran and disability employer. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are taking on Seneca. They're up 16 to nothing at the half. Bring in a quick score or two from around the region. As we do a couple uh, quick scroll through, there are some, some big games happening. Not, uh, I haven't seen a district score come through, but there are some games of, of note. Uh, well, now all of a sudden it, uh, it disappeared on me. There we go. We're back now. Uh, let's see. What we can't do is we do the good old scroll through right now as Nelson County and... Bardstown, it's 6-3 to three Bardstown at the half. Interesting game happening there. Barron County leads Warren Central 27-6 as that game is at uh, early in the second quarter there. Uh, Ed, it is Edmondson County trailing Owensboro Catholic 33-0 with 8 minutes and 45 seconds left in the first half of play. All Owensboro Catholic in that game. Uh, Bowling Green and South Warren all knotted up at 7 about halfway through the second quarter from down in Rich Pond. And we'll try to see. There was one more score I knew I wanted to bring you, and it involved Fairdale Butler. And that's a game that is interesting for playoff for both teams. And if you're a Seneca fan watching, you probably have interest just in general. And it is 28-6. Fairdale leads Butler at the end of the third quarter was the final score of that game. If that, if all of our results hold, Grayson County wins 16-0, mm -hmm. and Fairdale defeats Butler, that would open up to... Fairdale playing Atherton next week for their, it would be a district championship game, and Grayson County would get paired with a loser of that game. And that, and then the other side, you would have them playing the three seed from Grayson County's district, which if chalk happens and this result holds, would be Seneca. So again, a lot can happen between now and then. The scoring from the first half of play, a one-yard touchdown run by Caden Hanshaw put Grayson County up. 8-0 and a one-yard touchdown run by Colby Chaffins put the Cougs up 16-0. Second half, Grayson County and Seneca comes up next here on K105. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. 
Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're gonna help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Stadium Grayson County leads Seneca 16 to nothing as we start the get ready to start the second half of action. It'll be Seneca to receive the second half kickoff. Sam Bormley and Kaylor Decker back here with you on what is a just absolutely perfect night mm -hmm. here in the middle of October for football. Grayson County with a win clinches the number one seed in the district tur in the in the KHSCA playoffs. It'll happen here in a couple of weeks. Something they haven't done since 2014. I've only done really a couple of times in the history of the program. Lane Beasley will kick us away to start the second half of play. It's 16 to nothing. Grayson County on top. Seneca has a couple of players back deep to receive, including Julu to the far side, and the near side is going to be Lacey. And Beasley is going to let it fly over to that near side of the field, and it is going to go out of bounds. It's the third kickoff of the game by Lane Beasley. All three of them have gone out of bounds. So uh, Seneca is going to have the ball placed on the 35-yard line. I'm starting to wonder if he's doing this on purpose and keep it out of their hands. Because, I mean, both Julu and Lacey are, very, are great very athletes. Good athletes. And just surrender the 35. Because it is, all three of them have not been close, and I don't know that he's had a kickoff out of bounds all yeah, year. He's not looked. Are they going to make him re-kick it? Looks does like appear so. Interesting decision. Let's see if they just do it. If they do it again, then. No, I think we'll know. <laughs> if it happens again, I think we know. Caden Hanshaw just slowly strolled on the field. He was ready to, you could tell. Caden was in the mindset, I'm out here to play some defense, and they just took that away from him, and he was. He's kind of just slowly walking off the field like, man, these guys just not going to let me get out here and do what I love. Brian Jones is talking. How does he go onside kick maybe? Say, okay, you're going to decline mm, the penalty? Looks like he's overloading that right side. Okay, he's, he's switching. Shifting Stephen Lee and Jaron Van Meter. So Lane Beasley went out, kick from the 35-yard line. It's really rare you see a team decide to make him re-kick. Make him re-kick. Seneca has five players up on the line. Beasley to kick. He's going to kick it straight down the middle this time, and it's going to be caught back at about the 28-yard line by Julu. Across the far side, he's to the 35, he's to the 40, and he's dropped down. Great tackle across that far side by, I think, Carroll came in there mm -hmm. to make the tackle for Grayson County. Nice uh, play. No, not Mason, because Mason's all the way down there. It was... Might have been Grayson, because yes. he's, he's on that side. Yes, Grayson Chaffins was the player who made the tackle. So the penalty... <laughs> to decline it was the right decision. Yep. Ball gets up to the 43-yard line of Seneca. That's where they will start their first drive of the second half. They did not pick up a first down in the first half of play. It's 16 to nothing. Grayson County on top. Wide receiver goes on each side. Again, the backup quarterback starting today, Darion Spencer. And trotting in late is going to be Seise, who's going to trot out into a slot position. You get two wide receivers on each side. 
Seneca working from right to left on your radio dial to start this quarter. Be handoff right side on the give. It is Lacey. He breaks through. Actually, it's, it's Wilson, rather. Crosses the 50. Gets down to the 45-yard line. Biggest play of the game for Seneca. Turns out to be their first first down of the game here on the first play of the second half. And immediately, Brian Jones, the headset came off. Somebody may missed something. Well, he's, I don't, looks like he's, he might be talking to the officials about something. He's talking to somebody out there that he's yeah. unhappy with. Seneca going hurry up. First down and 10 placed on the Grayson 44-yard line. On the handoff, it's again to Wilson. He tries to stutter step and come to that near side, but instead is driven backwards by a host of Cougar defenders. He ran right into that defensive line. And looks like Matthew Phillips and Drake were in there to hmm. say hello. And that's that's something you got to do with a bigger guy like this is never let him get going. And they're going to give him one yard. As Wilson doesn't have a weight listed on his roster, he's six feet tall, and I'd say he might be 200 pounds, Kaler. He's, yeah, he's solidly built. He looks built. like it, yeah. Second and a nine. Wilson remains into the game to the left of Spencer. Direct quarterback run right up the middle for Spencer, and he's wrapped up by Raymond as he crosses the line of scrimmage, gets down to about the 41-yard line. About a two-yard pickup. In fact, actually, they're going to give him a pretty friendly spot down to the yeah. 40. Ten and a half to play here in this third quarter of play. Grayson County on top, 16-0. to Third down and six will come up. Remaining in the same formation, but a new running back is into the game. That's Martin. They're going to give it to Martin. Sweep right side. Hurdles a man. Jumps over. Bounces off of a tackler as he crosses the first down marker. Gets down inside the 35-yard line. Down to the 30. 10-yard run for Martin. And that's going to move the chains for a first down for Seneca. Their second of the drive. And Grayson County's defense has been really mm -hmm. good. But every single game, they've had one yep, drive. One and drive. this one's looking like that one drive. First down and 10. 10 minutes left here in this first half of play, in this third quarter of play. Running near side. It's a direct snap on the run. It is, and running down out of bounds, down to about the 26 yard line. As that was Spencer. Picks yeah, up four yards. It was definitely a designed pass. It just kind of fell apart. Uh, it, we let him break contain, honestly. I mean, Sawyer's got to do a better job breaking down there. You had him in the backfield for about a five, six yard loss. Second down and about six for Seneca. Martin to the left of Spencer. Spencer will pass, looks to the far side, steps up, gets away from Drake in the backfield, but he runs into his own man and runs into Weston Green and Grayson County has a host of players that will clean it up. Drake did a good job setting it. Brayton Mudd came in to clean up mm -hmm. after Spencer ran into Weston and Green, ran backwards, and Brayden Mudd was right there to meet him. And that's what you got to do. Force him up into the pocket to where everybody else is. Don't let him get outside you and let him be an athlete. Because I don't know that Green or Drake are going to get any credit no. on anything there, but they, they, they almost deserve like a little mm -hmm. asterisk. 8.38 left in the third quarter, 16-0. to zero. It just shows that you don't. You don't always have to touch the quarterback no. to, to make a big play. Sometimes that's even more annoying as a former quarterback, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you And the right. guys that just keep on annoying you. Screen near side, and it's well overthrown. And it is incomplete intended for Julie down on the near side. Yeah, I think you're in position. you got to go for it here. It is, that was third down and ten. It's fourth down and ten now. Seneca has not attempted a field goal since 2019. Got to imagine, I mean, you'd be looking at a 52 yard. Yeah, you're definitely yard, not. This 48 is, yarder here. This wouldn't be your first one in four years. Yeah, unless Marshall County's kicker, he's not down there, is he? No, I don't think so. He's probably in, uh, actually, they're playing Graves, uh, Graves County tonight, and I saw it was tied at the end of the first quarter. Really? It's a big rivalry, I know, down that way. Fourth down and 10. This is a big play for this defense, seeing if they can't get off the field. Trips to the right side, one here to the near side. Rolling out to the far side of the field as Spencer keeps the eyes downfield. Now throws back. He is a receiver, and it's caught. Touchdown, Seneca. Pulling it in is Reese Asher, the junior, and the Red Hawks have gotten back into the game. He just 
threw it right over top, threw it back across the field. And nice that, throw, 30 yard was, touchdown. That's, we, they went over that play in practice. And they like to roll away from the play they want to, they like to roll away from the pass they want to throw and it's that deep kind of slot crosser that will get behind the corner if he's not disciplined and I think that would have been Mason on the backside that has to keep his eyes out for that. Seneca in the first four games of the season had three two-point conversions. Again, as a reminder that they didn't put in stats for the last two games, so we don't know what happened in those last two. We don't know. We do know that they it's, didn't have a two-point conversion last it week. It is huge if you can't stop them here. Rolling would. out is Spencer. He's looking to dump it off. Pump fakes. Now continues to roll. Throws it off far side, and it is, is no incomplete. good. Incomplete. Intended for the receiver on the far side of the field. It's 16-6. to Grayson County on top, 8-15 to go in the third quarter. It's Cougar football on K105. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors in communities around the world. When disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Grayson County leads 16 to six as we have eight minutes and 15 seconds left in this third quarter of play. Seneca drives all the way down the field and scores on a 30 yard touchdown pass on fourth down and 10 to make it 16 six. And now the Red Hawks are gonna kick it away. It's a shorter kick on the bounce. Ethan Mudd's gonna take it at about the 26 yard line. He curls towards the near side as he gets across the 30, breaks through to the 35 and he's brought down at about the 41 yard line. About a 20 yard return for Ethan Mudd. Grayson County is going to get good field position to start their first drive of the second half. And, Kaylor, I thought in the first first half I had some good things, had some bad things, but overall, If you can okay. clean up the penalties and the turnovers, you should put up about, uh, I'd say, three more touchdowns than you did. And that's saying a lot. 8.09 to play here in this third quarter of play. It is The ball is going to be placed on the 41-yard line of Grayson County. In the gun will go Colby Chafin, so the running back on each side of him. Two wide receivers come down here to the near side. First down and 10. And now they're going to shift as Hanshaw and Van Meter are the running backs behind him, and they swap sides. Now Van Meter, actually, it's, it's Ethan Mudd, rather. As Van Meter shifts in motion, they're going to give it to Mudd on the sweep left side. He goes to the 40, crosses up to the 45-yard line, and he's dropped at about the 47 on the run, a pickup of about six yards. There for Ethan Mudd, one of his first touches of the game. And I see what we're kind of doing there. We've kind of given the stretch to Caden every time. We put him the opposite way and let him be the lead blocker, and it kind of catches them off guard, and we give it to Ethan. Second down and four will come up for Grayson County. Seven minutes and 43 seconds left in the third quarter of action. Grayson County leads 16-6. to six. Cougars looking to win their first district championship since 2014. It'll only be the third time in program history that a team has finished undefeated in district play. The last time happened was 1982, so it's been 41 years since that point. And, of course, that 1982 team, they'll tell you all kinds of stories about that here in Litchfield. Kept by Chaffins up the middle, crosses the 50-yard line right at the sticks. It's all going to depend on the spot. From my angle, it looked like he got it. Uh, he was a tad short. The ball didn't crack well, across. it looks like they got it. Yeah, or are we going to uh, have a measurement? I mean, it is really close. Oh, they're going to move it. I think he got it. And he did. He needed four. He got four. First down, Grayson County. 7-14 and counting left here in the third quarter. 16-6. to six. Grayson County on top of Seneca. And I like this, too, this offense. This reminds me kind of already in this first is of that first drive of the game. Yeah. Slow. Just slow. Methodical. That time is your best friend mm -hmm. in the world. It's still a two-possession game. Scoring margin means nothing. Yeah. The only margin that matters is you have one more point than Seneca at the end of this evening. 
Run near side for Hanshaw as he crosses the 50, gets away from a man. Penalty flags come flying in. And this one looks like it's coming back. And it's going to be a hold called against Grayson County. Brian Jones not happy. And we got to clean those up. So he was yelling at the official. And I think he was yelling at the head official asking, Number. who is that on? And... That move the ball back to the 50-yard line. Turns out to be an 11-yard penalty. Bring up first down and 21. And see, here's the thing. I mean, 6.30 left in this third quarter. Seneca's plenty of time. Yeah. And they just had their best drive mm -hmm. of the game by far. First yeah. drive, they picked up a first down. They're feeling good. You never know. And you don't want to let them get any more confidence than they already have. And now we're going to have a discussion on really where this ball is going to be placed. If it was to the original line of scrimmage, the ball should be placed in the yeah. 41. There they go. That's the right call. I was wondering why it was an 11-yard penalty. Good job on the officials, making sure they got it correct. And here we come. A pair of wide receivers on each side. Ball placed on the near hash. And shot to the left. Chaffins will pass. Three-step drop. Now steps up in the pocket, looking to scramble. Crosses the 40 and slides down and takes a big hit. It was an unintentional hit as he took a knee to the head of that was of Padre. I, and that's just one of those where sometimes it's, it's just bad luck. It, it was a screen, and he's got to know if that's covered up. Just throw it at the ground. <laughs> you, they aren't blocking for you in that situation. you got to just throw it at the feet of the closest receiver and live to play another day. And in some instances, too, Potential grounding is a lot better than taking a big old hit. He, that wouldn't even be intentional grounding. Well, I'm saying if, if, he, yeah. if he threw it to us up here, I'm saying like just yeah. like it's a lot better than absorbing those hits mm -hmm. because those add up, especially when you're – I mean, this is game number, you know, seven of the season. Mm -hmm. Wear and tear is starting to take effect. Chaffins rolls out to the far side of the field. Handshaw's a blocker in front of him. He's, He's going to let him. it fly oh, up the far boy. side. And it's, in, it's way over the head, and it's intercepted by Seneca. So it's picked off on the far side of the field by Lacey. And that was I, the worst throw Colby's made in, yeah. in no, weeks. Long time. I think maybe the first throw of his career against Edmondson. He should have threw that ball a lot earlier. He had Grayson, I think, on that far side. He had Grayson wide open whenever he should have threw the ball about five steps before he let it go. And running to your left, that's hard. But it shouldn't have been that far inside. It's time to call the fire department, though. Yep. And the thing is, Colby's got to realize he's at least just got to give him a chance. In that situation, it was... It was a punt return. Yeah, I mean, it was straight up in the air. Seneca had forced 11 turnovers in the first four games of the season. So, I mean, they are prone to forcing those. They forced three here tonight, which is a definite season high for Grayson yeah. County. Let's see what Seneca can do. They are coming off their best drive as it's first down and 10. Pitch coming to the near side of the field and rolling up across the 25-yard line. And carrying blockers with him, just running up across the 30-yard line, up near the 34, as Wilson was just carrying tacklers with him to the 34-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup and a first down for the Red Hawks. Kaylor, I don't like how this feels right now. No. It's just we're getting out physical right now is what's happening. First down and 10 for Seneca. Placed on the 34-yard line. Spencer, direct run right up the middle. Runs into a man. Penalty hold. flag comes in. This is going to be hold, so this is going to help you out here. Yeah. That's really been the story. And, and honestly, for Grayson County's offense, there haven't been many drives that they have just been clean. Well, and, and, and this se I mean, even this season, most of their bad drives this year have all been by penalties. Mm -hmm. They've not had many three and outs that didn't have a penalty. Yeah, it's they it's, can, it's can, always why they're shooting themselves in the foot. They can gain yards. It's just they aren't very smart doing it. And when and here in a couple of weeks, Grace County knows they're in the playoffs. You, you might be able to do that round one. You're not going to be able two, to do that round, round three, two. No. If you get to round three, you could be playing a Bowling Green, South Warren, Owensboro. <laughs> You're going to have to be perfect. More than that. Yeah. 
And they are going to have to make mistakes to potentially have the shot to pull off the upset. Spencer scrambling in the backfield, gets away from one way and gets away from a third, not going to get away from the fourth. He does get up to the line of scrimmage, though, and he's down at the 24-yard line. And that's a good job, even though they didn't have him at the original point, of keeping him inside the pocket instead of letting him escape outside, make him escape towards everybody else. Matthew Phillips comes off holding his, his left arm, just kind of dangling, and immediately is getting his shoulder checked on. And it might be a dislocation. Yeah, Scott Ballman is, is reaching in there. I know Matthew is a tough kid. And if he can go back in there, he will. As the training staff is looking at him right now, and you can tell he is feeling in some kind of pain. Sweep out right far side of the field and turning up. Nice tackle. Conrad Raymond came down to get him low mm -hmm. before he could get going, and he gets you, two yeah. yards to the 26. You have to take very good angles against a team like this with the athletes. And Raymond did a great job yep. as the linebacker. Almost spying in a way mm -hmm. of that, if making sure that, because if he doesn't and he gets speed, it could be it could be a house call. Phillips is still getting worked on. Brian Jones is now checking on him right now, trying to see everything that's going on. It'll be third down and long, 3:15 left in the third quarter. Grayson County leads 16 to six against Seneca. Trips down near the near side, a wide receiver to the far side. Throwing out to the far side, kind of a looping pass goes in and out of the hands of Asher, and it is incomplete. And I think he got a punt. Yeah. And that's where you're seeing Spencer being an a inexperienced. inexperienced. Thank you. You took the word out of my mouth because it, I, that ball had too much of an arc. Mm -hmm. And that's, even if Asher would have caught it, he'd have been hit immediately yeah, because one, it allowed the DB the DB to come back. That's one you got to put on a line and make sure it hits your guy in the chest and he has room to make a guy or two miss after the catch. Or if anything, get the six or seven yeah. yards and go make, out of bounds and, and go from there. Because you could potentially make it third, fourth, fourth and manageable, but that's still, if you're going to put that much arc, even if he catches it, it won't be. Van Meter stands back at about his own 46, at his own 46 yard line on the punt from Yang. And it's a spinning line drive kick. Van Meter's going to catch it at the 44 yard line, goes right up the middle. He crosses the 50, takes a big hit. As he crosses the 50 yard line, appears that he is okay. And so a punt return of about 10 yards for Jaron Van Meter and the Grayson County offense is going to come back out where they have had a lot of turnovers here in this game. Mm -hmm. And got to sure those up, especially this last 14 minutes. You had 2.57 to go. I mean, a touchdown here could be a dagger. Mm -hmm. Especially if you defense keeps playing like it has, aside from that one broken drive. Ball is placed on the Seneca 49-yard line. And I'd imagine you're going to see him rely on the run here. I would say so, especially after a hit to Colby's confidence. You got four down here to the near side, four wide to the near side. No one out to the far side. Got almost an ace formation. As Hanshaw is the lone running back in the backfield. Pitch to Hanshaw, near side, turns up field at the 50, and he's hit from behind. That's not somebody I necessarily want to get hit from behind. No. Curtis Allen just landed all 390 pounds on Caden Hanshaw's back. Uh, it, that one, uh, Caden's going to feel tomorrow. Hey, yeah. Uh, we just we haven't been able to get the edge real well tonight. I think our better runs have been inside the tackles. Because if you get to the second level, and because, I mean, Seneca very big on mm -hmm. that line. Get through them. Yeah, because they're not going to chase it down. No. And that's not taking a shot at them. No, I mean, just, you're not going to have many defensive linemen no. that are going to chase you down. Because if they could chase you down, they'd be a linebacker. Yeah. Second uh, second down and eight, 210 left in the third quarter, 16-6, Grayson County on top. And whistle blown and delay, and delay a game called against Grayson oh. County. Uh, I didn't think it Did they call a legal shift? Because I saw the official go like this, and is that not an illegal shift? Well, it, regardless, five-yard penalty, it doesn't matter. But no. Because I saw the the back official did throw down his his. And he's typically the one that would call. But I saw the official go like this, which is not. Yeah, that's not the delay game. But typically, the back official wouldn't throw an illegal shift. That's up to your side judges and your back I, judge. It's kind of what I'm saying. I don't know. 148 left in this third quarter of play. Grayson County has the lead, and they're going to get it right back. Yep. As jumping up across that far side, 
was uh, Kimoni Duncan. And immediately Jaquan Jackson went over to him, and you could tell I, I wasn't in that little <laughs> conversation. Was probably like, man, what are we, what are we doing? Like, so you, you, you just give him five yards right back. Essentially, that penalty never happened. Ninety seconds and counting left here in this third quarter. Sixteen to six. I'm sure, though, if you ask Brian Jones, it happened. Yeah. And there have been a lot of delay games called this year, too, on Grayson County, mm -hmm. which those, as you as a quarterback will say, are, are completely unacceptable. Yeah, no, they are, because that's all on you and your effort to get in and out of the huddle. And Shaw's got the edge. He crosses the 45, and he had to get away from one man who made the tackle as he crosses the 45-yard line, and that was Jackson. Really nice play mm -hmm. made by the big man. I mean, he was – if Hanshaw gets past him – He'd probably had another 10. Yeah, but he had a chance to make a man miss out in the open field and maybe even take it all the way. He does get four down to the 43. Third down and four. Grace County will have to snap it one more time. A very late penalty flag comes in, thrown at the Grayson County huddle. Is that personal foul? Called against dead? And now I thought I saw him say personal foul, but mm -hmm. that was thrown – Really late. If it should have been unsportsmanlike. That's what I'm saying. And now Grace County. That's multiple times that play things like that have happened. So the ball's now moved back, and you went from third and four now to third and. 19. You just, you, you can't have that happen. Brian Jones still letting the head official have it. He's not happy. And and it, it might be a mix of frustration in his team. And and he's taking it out in, in everything. Chaffins to pass on third down and long. He throws it on the curl. Chaffins, mm, Grayson yes. Chaffins goes diving after. It's incomplete. Stops the clock with 10.3. And a drive that looked really good is now going to turn out to be a punt. Yeah. And giving Seneca the ball back. Down 10. Pretty much the start of the fourth quarter of play. The penalty must have been on Weston yeah. Green because and he is uh, – and he's the one that had the, he's had the a late couple hit of them. last week as well or against North Bullet, the one that took away the Caden Hanshaw touchdown. Here comes the kick from Lane Beasley. He stands at his 30. Got a pair of returners back. Beasley gets it away. It's a sky-high punt. It's going to take a bounce and a big Grayson County bounce as it crosses the 30, continuing to roll down inside the 20-yard line. So it rolls right in front of our camera operator, Eli Smith. A heck of a punt down to the 18. Great punt by Grayson County, 16-6. Grayson County leads Seneca at the end of the third quarter. It's Cougar football on K105. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day. A movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Grayson County leads 16-6 as we start this fourth quarter of play. Here from Grayson County High School. A great punt that went out of bounds at the 18-yard line. About a 44-yard punt from Lane Beasley, and Seneca's going to have the ball here. There, down by 10 points. Sam Gormley and Kaylor Decker are with you here. Kind of a low snap. It's a little looping pass out to Julu on the far side of the field. He breaks a tackle, continuing to move the legs. He's still on his feet as he crosses the 20-yard line, and finally they're going to blow the whistle in the mass of players as he gets up to about the 23 or the 24. This is on. I know we're winning. This has been one of the worst games we've played when it comes to all around, just fundamentally 
sloppy. Yeah. They, they look like a team that – Is coming off a bye week. Exactly. Bad tackling, bad penalties. And they're lucky Turnovers. that Seneca really has kind of looked the same way. Mm-hmm. Trips down here to the near side. A wide receiver to the left. In the gun will go the quarterback, Spencer, who has really settled in after a rough first half. He throws far side in and out of the hands of Lacey. And it will bring up third down. The defenders were closing in. Grace County sticking with that single high safety of Grayson Chaffins. 4-4 look on the inside. In the gun, third down and four for Seneca. Shifting in motion. It's a handoff, Wilson, left side. He was hitting the backfield, moves up to the left side. He's short of the first down marker. He gained about one or two as he gets down to the 27-yard line. He officially gets three. They're going to hurry up. Fourth down and short coming up here for Seneca. He's fourth down in two, one, one. One. If not even less than one. I'd look at a direct snap here, him just running right up. Going. Seneca hasn't taken a snap under center all game. Fourth down and one. It's a handoff to Wilson. Left side run, and he it's really close on the run left side. It was actually the running mm. back Martin, and it looks like he got enough. He needed a half a yard, and I think he got a half a yard. Yeah. I mean, it was like that one Colby had earlier. First down, ten and a half left here in this fourth quarter of play. It's 16 to six. Trips down here to the near side, a wide receiver to the left. Give it to Martin, left side. He bounces it outside, tries to get outside the numbers as he crosses it, crosses the 30-yard line, gets up to the 32, four-yard run for Martin. I mean, if, if you're Grayson County here too, you got to think you're up 10, mm -hmm. so they have to score twice. Ten minutes to go. Yeah, you're fine with getting them three yeah. or four yards. And they almost have to score two touchdowns because they've not kicked a field goal in four years. Exactly, since, since 2019. And a kid is not in high school anymore. <laughs> and unless Marshall County's kicker is on a bus. On his way. On his way here. Well, if he's coming from Graves County, and that's what they're it's playing. It's going to be a little bit of a while. Throwing over the far side, pass complete after a pickup of a couple of yards to the 36-yard line, four-yard pickup. And it's going to bring up third down and short again of about three here for, Mar for, I was about to say, Marshall County. For Seneca, Marshall County on the mind. Some definite frustration on the sideline, though, for this Grayson County team that thinks they should probably be up by two or three touchdowns <laughs> right now. It should probably be more, honestly. Trips to the near side, a wide receiver to the left side. In the gun will go Spencer. Fakes the handoff, throwing near side. It's complete, and dropping it was Asher, and he took a big hit from Mason Carroll. I mean, Mason Carroll blew up Asher. Yeah. And that's a great job by him recognizing the screen and getting downhill in a hurry. Fourth down and three. And that's kind of the downside of having a quarterback that loops it outside because on those screen passes that have to be hit quick. It allows the corner to come. The corner can get there. 9-10 to go here in the game. 16-6, Grayson County on top. They'll leave the offense out on the field. They're going to bring in Mays as the running back to the right of Spencer. And Spencer, the backup quarterback. They're going to give it to Mays. Left side run. He's got the first down and a lot more as he crosses the 45 to the 50. Down across the 45-yard line, getting down to the 41. They put Mays in. His first touch of the game brings 25 yards and a first down for Seneca. You can't have those if you're going to try to use the clock to your advantage. So. Especially on fourth and four. No. I mean, that's, that's two huge plays on fourth downs that we've allowed. First down and 10. This all comes after a really good punt by your punter, Lane Beasley. They're going to load up with a couple of blockers on the right side of the line. They're going to shift the running back to the left of Spencer. It's a bobbled snap, and Spencer smartly just falls on it. Weston Green comes in and lays a hit down. Spencer paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. It's a loss of six yards, but a really smart play. Yeah, I mean, you don't make a bad or worse in that situation because 98% of the time, 
only a worse thing is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not going to make it much better. You're not Lamar Jackson. Mm, yeah. You're not, I would say Kyler Murray, but probably not there. Uh, no. There, there are very few players. You're not Kaylor Decker, yeah. you know, back there. You'd have picked it up and you'd have thrown a 50-yard bomb for a touchdown, I know. Well, uh, depends on the play was called. If it was a run play, I probably would have lost about 10 yards. <laughs> Second down and long for Seneca. Trips to the near side of the field. Run Wilson, left side being chased by Vincent. Vincent has him wrapped up as he crosses the 45-yard line. Gets down to about the 42. You're starting to see some of the fans come to life here at Cougar Stadium. And that's important because out there you feed off of it. To the 43-yard line, that's a four-yard run for Wilson. Seven and a half to go in the game. Here's the thing. Seneca's got to start to, to pick, pick it up, up the, a little yeah. bit. They're, I mean, you're down 10. With seven minutes left, and you're at the 40. 40. Trips down here to the near side. To pass is Spencer. He looks, he fires down the near side of the field, and it is incomplete. Oh, he, we got lucky. Intended for Asher down the near side. We got very lucky because Caden got beat on the double move on the opposite side. Yeah, if Asher probably would have kept running, he'd have maybe been able to catch that one maybe in stride too. That one too, but <laughs> uh, number one on the back side over there was wide open. Lacey. 7-10 to go here in the game. It is fourth down and 12 for Seneca. And and you you got to know if you're Grayson County, 31-yard yes. line. That's where they need to get. You do not let him pass that. Spencer to pass, throws over the middle, and it's complete. He turns back. He ends up going back and picking up the first down is Lacey. Lacey gets to the 30-yard line. He caught it at the 30, ran backwards to the 32, and then turned back to the 30. I mean, if you're if you're Eckloff, the head coach at Seneca, you just lay down. You got the first <laughs> you, down. Because yeah, if you go were. backwards, you lose it. Because, I mean, you went back on your own power at that situation. That's a 14-yard pickup. Whistle blown, and we have an injury for Seneca on that far side of the field. Player is down and cramping. Looks like that's number one. That would be Lacey, who just made that last catch. He officially goes down to the 29-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. It's 16 to 6, 704 to go in the game. This Grayson County defense has been stellar over these last couple of weeks as they are allowing only 9.4 points per game this season, lowest in Class 5A. They have allowed single-digit points in five straight for the first time since the start to the 2010 season, as that was six straight. And if they can hold the result that we're at right now, it would hold a team to six straight points under, or six straight games under 10 points for only the third time in program history joining that 2010 team in 1982. Wow. Two of the best teams in, yeah. in program history. That 2010 team was just in a brutal district. Uh, they have Owensboro. Warren or? Central and Bowling Green. Okay, And yeah. that's when Warren Central was in their heyday. That was pre-South Warren. So they had everybody. <laughs> yes. First down and 10 for Seneca. Placed on the Grayson County 29-yard line under seven and counting. The play in the game at 16 to six and a false start. Uh, Gonna be called be. on the right side of the line. And neutral zone, we jumped and he jumped it after. It is. Neutral zone infraction. Weston Green trying to plead his case, saying that it was a false start. The no. officials say. It's not a false start if you're in the neutral zone. It's exactly what they told him. And again, Gracie just shooting themselves in the foot. Hand off, Martin hit. Nice play. Great play coming in. Ethan Mudd hits him in the backfield for a loss of maybe half a yard. It looks like they're going to say no gain. Actually, it is going to be a loss of a yard. Back to the 25-yard line. This will be the 14th play of the drive for Seneca. Started back at their own 18-yard line at the start of this fourth quarter of play. And you're okay with a drive like this if you're us. Be better if you can hold it to zero. Yeah. Pair of wide receivers on each side. Martin to the right. Spencer will pass. Steps up in the pocket. Just throws it off. A screen play far side of the field. He dumps it off. Turning up to the near side. Diving across is Julu. Mm -hmm. He is short. Forward. He gets to the 21-yard line. That's a four-yard pickup. Bring up third down and up two here for Seneca. Under six minutes and counting now. 16-6. Grayson County has the advantage. Trying to win the district championship for the first time since 2014. 
and clinch at least one home playoff game. And if they win that one, it would be a second one. To pass. Spencer rolls out to the far side, gets away from one man, not going to get away from the second. He's dropped for a loss of a sack on the play. That's huge. You got him in fourth down again. Dave, I think you got to stop him on one of these. Ethan Mudd was one of the first men in there on the play. I think Braden Mudd might have been in there as well. It's a loss officially of about two yards. Back to the 23-yard line, fourth down and three with five minutes to go here Oops. in the game. Closer to four. Looks like they moved it back a yard. They did. They did. They moved it back to the 24. So it's a loss of three yards on the sack. Seneca's already converted multiple fourth downs on this drive. Do they have another one in them? It's faking the run, throwing, and it is at the sticks, and it, it looks, looks like short. he's short. The completion and the spot. It's all going to depend on the spot, but the early spot and indication says that he's short on the pass completion. We look That's on ours. the far side. Hey. Grayson County has the football. Now try to drain this clock as much as you can. The Cougars stand a 16-play drive, ends a turnover on downs with no points. And the number one thing, make sure that you have two hands on the ball. You can put a third hand if you got it. <laughs> if you do, that would be very impressive, but I think two hands for me will suffice. Grayson County will have it on their own 20-yard line. You play good offense, Seneca doesn't touch the ball again. Mm -hmm. Or you score a touchdown, and that works as well. I'm okay with that. Power eye for Grayson County. Under center will go Colby Chaffins. It's a run Hanshaw up the middle as he crosses the 20-yard line, gets up to about the 25, five-yard pickup. This Grayson County team has talked all year long about this being their goal. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, it wasn't just a goal. It was an expectation. Yeah. I mean, they I, honestly, they were expected to, they got predicted to be fourth in the district. What The Cats Paws predicted Grayson County to be fourth. The Courier Journal picked them to be second. In Grayson County, I know, uh, to quote Michael Jordan, they took that personally. They did. <laughs> and you better believe that a win here, giving them Seneca was picked to win the district in both of those polls. Sticking with the power eye, second down and five for Grayson County. Huge opportunity for the Cougs here. Hand off Hanshaw. He tries to bounce it to the near side. Turns up field, gets to the 29, about a four-yard pickup. Third, third, down, third down and one. Sam Gormley and Kaylor Decker here with you on what has turned out to be a gorgeous night at Cougar Stadium. A good crowd has come out here as well to help support this Grayson County team. Grayson obviously in absolutely no rush. Third and one. If you get a first here, you can milk it down to close to a minute. it would be interesting to see when Seneca begins taking timeouts as well because they have to score twice, yep. something to keep in mind. Power eye, and it's a quarterback sneak up the middle. He got it. First indication is, is he got it. He dives yep. up across. His head is across the line, and it looks like he has enough. First down. Move the chains. First down, Grayson County up to the 31-yard line for Colby Chaffins. Two minutes and 48 seconds here to play in this fourth quarter of play. It is 16 to 6. Sticking with the same formation. One wide receiver down here to the near side. They have a ton of blockers up on that line. It's the power eye. Again, Hanshaw on the give. Dives up across the 30, gets to about the 35, and Grace is just going five yards every single yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, that's – And if you don't call a timeout, that's – I think you keep that keep cloth. You, you, you got to start taking your timeouts. Now. you got I mean, two minutes to go. You, you have to. Now, yeah. I mean, because you, – you, you, you are down by ten points. You have to score twice. I don't understand why he's not touched them yet. They aren't Honestly, going. Honestly, he should have taken it probably a minute and a half ago. Yeah, they aren't going anywhere. <laughs> you, you can't take them and use them next week. When Seneca, they travel to Bullet Central. They're not, right. uh, they're no good in Shepherdsville. Yeah, you can't stack them and get six whenever you go over there. Be nice. 
that, I, man, I don't even know if you need that many. Be a lot. If you like burn a two minute warning, yeah, that'd be nice. But even then, that's a lot. Yeah. Chaffins pitches it to Hanshaws. He crosses the 35 yard line, dives up to the 40, and it'll bring up third down and one. And I really have no idea why Seneca is not taking any timeouts. It's uh -huh. a minute 20 to go in the game. That just looks they're like just, they're surrendering. They're quitting. Yeah. Grayson County's going to win this football game 16 to 6. Well, and did I hear? It? Now they call a timeout with 111 to go. We'll take it with them. 16 to 6. Grayson County has the lead. This is Cougar football on K105. That might be one of the worst examples of clock. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Grayson County on top, 16 to six with 111 to go. Kaylor, I felt like you were that uh, GIF of Peyton Manning on the like the first Manning cast. Yeah, just putting out timeout, timeout. Well, I guess you really weren't because you're 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 cheering for Grayson County, so you didn't want Seneca to take no, the timeout. No, but it, it just it doesn't make sense. Third down and one for Grayson County. First down pretty much ends it. If the Cougars can get it, as Seneca didn't really use their timeouts down the stretch. Hanshaw runs, right side, touch, he's got the first down. Penalty flag comes in. Multiple penalty flags come in as somebody was laid out behind the play. Weston Green, and now the ball is loose. Seneca has it running up the far sideline, and I don't know what's happening here, Kaylor. I mean, there is so many penalty flags on the field. A player was thrown down after the play by Grayson County. Seneca has the football standing in the end zone. I, I, uh, one Seneca player, uh, Julu, is 15 yards behind the play, kneeling down. I, I, I got nothing. I, and we're going to have a conference here to discuss this because I, I got nothing on, on what this might be. The only flag I can think of is a hurdle, but they've not called it yet. They haven't. But there was also one behind the play after I saw Weston Green laying down like he just got attacked or mauled. <laughs> He was trying to sell something. Kevin Embry is not happy on the sideline. And now Brian Jones is coming out to join him. As the conference is happening right now. Caden Hanshaw did pick up the first down. Yeah. There is 103 left in the ball well, game right I, now. I, they came up with the ball, so let's determine if they – Okay, here we go. Let's see what he says here. Now, that's not what you want. Okay. Well, Brian Jones is trying to say that Hanshaw was down, I believe. So it looks like Seneca's going to have the football, maybe. So let's see. Penalty flag. And now the official's holding, holding out his hand, saying he's heard enough from Brian Jones. And it is, looking at Caden's reaction, it does appear Seneca's going to have the football. That's why I don't really like hurdling or doing stuff like that when all you have to do is get a yard. Now the official is going to go talk to Keith Eckloff. And Keith Eckloff's decision to not take any timeouts might end up being the right decision. I mean, not really because you – well, now I don't – now wait, now they're moving the ball back. Does Grayson County still have the football? Yeah, looks like it. I'm I have no idea. I'm still running the ball. Oh, without question. If anything, you force them to take the timeout. Yeah, I mean, because that's all that play did. And they still have to score twice. Yeah. I mean, and if they can score twice in one minute. With one that, timeout. With one timeout, you, you go over, you shake their hand, and you say congrats. Okay, let's see what it is. Dead ball is what I thought I saw. Okay. We, he never told us what the penalty was. No. It was on Grayson County. And Grayson County has the football. That's all Place back at the 32-yard line. That's all that really matters. <laughs> Third down and nine will come up and here the for Grayson. Clock starts too. It does, and, and you can milk I it. I believe 
And now, yep, Seneca's going to take their time out. Which ends up, I mean, honestly, I mean, I guess the first down would have been a whole lot better because then you could have thrown some knees down, but that's not the worst thing in the world well, because I now. Mean, that really didn't do much difference because you can run this down to 10 seconds now after this play. It's still weird. We never got a signal as to what the what the penalty was. It's where we. I wish we had the technology to be mic'd to have the officials. Well, mic'd I know up. the officials are mic'd up because I've seen them kind of use them to talk to, to each talk other. To talk to each other. I wish we could have access to that microphone. Uh, a couple of score updates I have to bring you. Owensboro Catholic defeats Edmondson County 48 to seven. That is a final score. And what more can we see here? A high-scoring game uh, happening in Caverna tonight. Russellville and Cabrera tied at 26, four minutes left in the second quarter. Some offense happening here. And we'll try to see. I think keeps liking to refresh tonight here, Kaylor, and I'm not particularly sure why, but it's kind of driving me crazy because every time I do that, then I have to restart back up at the top. As I continue to scroll through here, seeing if there's any other score updates of interest, St. X defeats Mead County 43-0. to wow. That is a final score. And Mead is not bad. It just shows you the difference between Louisville and not Louisville, especially St. X. St. X, who very well could win the 6A title with Kevin Wallace as their head coach. So here we come. Third down and nine, 53.9 seconds on the clock. Chafin's under center. Fakes the handoff. They're going to pass, throwing near sideline, going for Grayson Chafin's, and it is incomplete. With 46.2 seconds on the clock, Brian Jones was going for the kill shot. I don't know if I like that. I mean, I know the game's over, but I mean, I know I'm aggressive. That's See, hyper aggressive because you could have ran the clock down to about 10 seconds and you could have almost ended it on this play. I kind of agree with you. I probably would have run the ball. And I'm usually a <laughs> pass first, yo, yeah. You know me, I, I there's nothing more than I love than some – some let's let Colby rip. Yeah. <laughs> but in that situation, I've been like, Coach, I am perfectly yeah. fine handing you, the ball off. Your blockers here, you, you got a block here from Lane Beasley, and he gets it away, and honestly, that's the most important thing. It really doesn't matter as to where this ball goes. It takes a bounce straight up into the air, crossing the 50-yard line. It's going to be picked up by a Seneca player at the 46. Max, don't even, like, don't even touch it because no. what happens if you drop it, then the game is really over. They would almost have to score and – one play here, get an onside kick. You got 37.2 seconds on the clock. Seneca does have one timeout. The ball is placed in their own 46-yard line. Now here's the biggest thing. No penalties. No. Well, on the good side, this isn't the NFL uh, where if you're going to throw a pass. And yeah, unless <laughs> it's going to be a touchdown, then pull them down. Yeah, where but it's 15 yards, you'll live with that. All alone is Spencer. Three wide receivers to the left side now. He's going to be joined by Wilson in the backfield. You never know if they just try a screen for Wilson. He's a great athlete. Maybe to yeah. see if he can't make something happen. To pass is Spencer. He runs into a man as he tried to step up in the pocket. Gets away from another man. Braden Mudd is there to bring him down. Mudd comes in for the sack for Grayson County. Spencer oh, is totally. down. Seneca takes the timeout with 27.7 on the clock. That, they did have another timeout. That's part of they did. So that makes more sense why Jones would have wanted the pass there. Because the run wouldn't have drained the clock at all. But it would have forced him to take the last time out. Because mm -hmm. in this case, then you're there snapping the ball with 10. Thir I was going to say 13 if I was feeling yeah. generous, and then that's the ball game. Uh, hindsight's 20 20, though. Because Grayson pulls that in, daggers out. It looks like a genius. And and Grayson County's district champions, which looks to be the case anyway. The case right now. And this game, ugly. No question about that. But Man. the only thing that matters <laughs> you won. is that scoreboard right now says 16 to 6 Grayson County. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Because RPI doesn't look at that. All they look at is the score. Or and and, and really that they don't even look at that. They just look at who won. Yeah. And RPI ain't gonna matter now. Trips to the left side of the field. To pass is Spencer. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw over the middle. It's complete to Asher, and, and he's down at the 50-yard line. And really, Asher probably should have just dropped it as he only picks up 
maybe about six or seven yards down to the 49 yard line. You've got 12 seconds and counting. Seneca's got to snap the ball with 10 seconds and counting. They got to do something. It's not going to matter. The Daggers are coming out of Grayson County High School as it's going to count it down and they are going to take one more play. Spencer rolls out to the far side of the field. He is going to run the football up the far side and he's still rolling as he crosses the 35, still on his feet. Mason Carroll is going to, he's still on his feet as he gets down to about the 10 yard line. It doesn't matter. Grayson County for the first time since 2014 has won the district championship. A massive celebration is happening out onto the field. Grayson County is celebrating right now on the field after winning their first district championship since 2014. The final score tonight, 16 to six. It wasn't pretty, but in the end, the only thing that matters is Grayson County has won the football game. Kaler, this feels pretty darn good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It wasn't pretty, but the Cougars have picked up the win here tonight by the final score of 16 to 6. The fireworks continue to burst. We will take a break and come back with more. Again, your final score here tonight, Grayson County defeats Seneca 16 to 6. This is Cougar Football on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Cougar football on K105. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars have won the district championship. It's their first district championship since 2014. The final score tonight here is 16 to 6. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, come back. The fifth quarter show comes up next. We'll hear from a head coach of the Cougars that I know is very wet. I think he got, uh, <laughs> he got, he got Gatorade the Gatorade bath, bath which, uh, you know what, I, I'm sure it feels a little sweet. He's probably not thrilled at the performance tonight, no, but, but they're district champs. Exactly. And in, in all reality, tonight, that's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. Grayson County wins 16-6. to We'll come back. Fifth quarter shows next on K105. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. 
we had an MRI and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we gotta operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. The governor has declared the state of emergency. An evacuation is now underway as the storm approaches. The National Weather Service has issued a warning as it monitors the storm. The following counties therefore should see. Convoy of Hope is ready to help you prepare for the next storm. Visit convoy.org slash prepare. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Grayson County Cougars have won the 2014 district championship by a final score of 16 to 6 against Seneca. A first uh, district championship since 2014 is the last time that the Cougars have won the district as Coach Jones is whipping Kaler with his headset. Uh, Coach, you're district champions. Amen. How's that feel? Oh, Are you incredible. A wet? I'm soaked. I love it. <laughs> It's been a long time since I got to uh, pull up, you know, Gatorade or water poured on me. And that one, to be honest, uh, probably the best one I've ever felt. You know, I, I remember the first time I ever got it. Uh, I was in Todd County, and they were on like a 30-game losing streak. And we won the very opening game, and kids did it then, and that was pretty memorable. But ain't nothing like being a champion. Tonight? wasn't what you wanted you won which you know in 30 years they look back they'll just see that you won the game and got that district championship and that is what matters when you see the kids celebration what does that mean to you knowing that they have accomplished something that doesn't happen here you know we we, we got a our, our breakdown on everything that we did this week after practice when we're leaving the weight room everything like that was champions and uh 
you know, I, I, these kids work their butts off um, 10 months out of the year in the weight room, on the track, uh, on the field. And, um, you know, to see their efforts um, reap some rewards is, uh, you know, it's awesome. Um, I, it, I couldn't – it's hard to put into words, to be honest with you. You know, uh, Sawyer Drake, you know, he came up and hugged me at the end. He said – that fifth year was worth it. He said, this is what we did it for. And, uh, you know, that – I don't know. It's just those guys down there, I mean, they're warriors. And they've really bought into physicality, bend, don't break, uh, take what they give us. And uh, you're right, it wasn't pretty. Uh, you know, first half I felt like we were extremely successful on offense, but – uh, penalties got us on one drive, and then two fumbles got us on two other drives, the other two possessions we scored. Uh, second half, you know, they made some adjustments. They really upped their effort. Um, and, uh, you know, we struggled a little bit on the offense side. They held the ball for long possessions in the second half. But, um, you know, I, I heard a quote, and I think I've said it on the air before, a few weeks ago about how champions handle adversity. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like that that's something that's just been our MO this year is, is adversity. Um, you know, from injuries to penalties to turnovers. And, um, you know, I feel like we, we handle it. We, we just march right on and play the next play and, and, and they handle it like champions. And, and that's why they're champions tonight. Your defense – that drive there in the fourth quarter, 16 plays, no points. Yep. They you bend but do not break, and they do something tonight, allowing 10 points or less in six straight for only the third time in the history of the program, 2010 and 1982. Those are two. You coached against that 2010 team. Yep. You know that they were pretty darn good, yep. and you've heard stories of the 1982 team, and you know they were pretty darn good. Yep. That's a heck, of a, a heck of a group to be a part of. Absolutely. Uh, and three district championships in school history, uh, you know, three times of achieving that. And they've got more achievements in front of them. And uh, that's what, you know, one of the things I told them, I said, guys, I want you to to enjoy this. You've earned it. You're a champion the rest of your life. Uh, 50 years from now, 2023 will be mentioned among the Grayson County elite teams. I said, but we're not done. You know, uh, we can have a nine-win season for about the fifth time or sixth time in school history. We can have a 10 or 11 game win season still, or 12, uh, and win more than nine for the second time in school history. Um, you know, these guys, I think, are hungry. And, um, you know, they've earned the right to play here, I believe, November 3rd as a number one seed in the district. And, uh, man, that's uh, – like you said, it's not something that happens here. And I'll be honest, I was nervous all day long, not because it was Seneca, but because of I knew the magnitude of the opportunity they had in front of them, and I wanted more than anything for them to experience that success. Um, and uh, I, I just couldn't be more happy that this group of guys, this group of seniors, you know, this is my first four-year class that's graduating they were freshmen when I took over for Coach Smart. Um, and so, you know, I, I've been with them as the head coach for four years. And, uh, you know, they're a special special group. You know, when you start spending that kind of time with guys, it, uh, you know, they like I said, they, they become like your sons. And, uh, you know, I talk to them often about, you know, the, how they represent the program, the community. Um, you know, that's something else I want to say. We get done – and we get down there in the end zone, and I turn around and I look, and it looked like not one person had left this stadium. And that's why we came over here to celebrate with our fans. That, that is special. You know, those, everybody's still here. Cheerleaders still cheering. And, uh, you know, I wanted the kids to say thank you, you know, to the community. Uh, I wanted the community to be able to say thank you to the kids. And, uh, man, what a – Awesome atmosphere, awesome game, and and it feels great to be district champs. Kaylor, you got a question? District play is over, but do you still do have 
two regular season games left. Yep. How do you make sure the kids don't get complacent now that they are the district champs and still continue to get bit better the next two weeks, even though this those two games really have no playoff implications? Well, number one, uh, you know, one team's right across the dam um, and uh, is, you know, one of our probably three rivalry games uh, that I would consider we have. Uh, one, you know, to the west of us, one to the east of us, and then I guess there to maybe a little to the north of us. Um, and it's gotten to us that uh, maybe they uh, don't think that we match our record. Uh, so there's a little bit of that, a little poster board material. Um, and uh, so Which your team has had multiple times this year. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think people keep doubting us, and, and we like it. Uh, you know, keep leaving us down in the polls and the rankings and everything else. And um, so that's that's next week, rivalry game. And then um, you know, it's been a few years since we've played Hancock as a, as a regular season game, but – they're going to be a good team, and I think for us, it's we got to look at that as this is the preparation for the playoffs. I think they're a good game to to rev up into postseason play, um, and so uh, you know I, I don't think these guys lack motivation. I'll just be honest with you. Um, you know I think their desire to win as many games as possible is extremely high. So I don't, I don't see us having a letdown problem. Um, I think our preparation's been good. Uh, Coach Embry might be the best defense coordinator in the state of Kentucky. Um, and so, you know, I have no doubt in his game plan. And, um, you know, I, we're going to do our due diligence on the offense side of the ball because we like to score as many points as possible. And um, and so, you know, I think it's just another week where we continue to live our mantra this year of being the hammer. Uh, we want to be the most physical team on the field. Uh, and – you know, some guys are getting close to some milestones. I think you'll see some extra motivation to, to reach that. You know, Caden Hanshaw is probably getting really close to 1,000. Um, I would say Colby, you know, is, is within reach of 1,000 yards passing. Um, you know, so we got some guys that, that do like stats. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, if you play an offensive position uh, that carries a stat, you'd be a fool for not liking them. So – we, we, we've got a lot of things, milestones, I think, in front of us as a program, as, as players, and things like that that I think are going to uh, see us stay hungry. Uh, and, you know, I, we're, we're uh, first or second, I don't know. I didn't look this week. but And uh, team defense as far as scoring. First in the class. Um, you know, so um, – and that's going to go down a little bit more again tonight. Um and so, you know, I think the defensive side of the ball loves that and would like to maintain that. And uh, so, you know, we got a lot of things uh, to continue to play for. I, I, I wouldn't think that uh, letdown or complacency or anything like that will be an issue. Um, you know, if anything, I could see us revving up a little bit. Really quick. You look I'll stay at, on all night. I mean, listen, we, we, we've got two more breaks if you want. You could just take Kaler's spot out there <laughs> or something. Uh, really quick, though, uh, you know, you look at your coaching staff, and you mentioned Kevin Embry. Uh, you've got his dad, Shane Decker. You've got Chris Drake. You've got some of these guys who have been a part of Grayson County football for a long time. They've yep. played. They've coached for a long time. It's got to be extra sweet to see them enjoy this because, listen, it, it means almost a little bit more to them. Oh, absolutely. You know, Kevin's been in pro in the program uh, for 20-plus years. And Pretty much since he played. Yep. You know, I know he's had a couple of years yep. off in those times. Um, and Chris has been a part of a really long time as a player and then probably the last uh, 10 or 12 years as a coach. Um, and uh, Shane, you know, uh, has coached for probably 18 years or so, 15 years, somewhere in there, 15, 18, 18. years. Um, that he's been his a coach. entire life, pretty yeah. much. Um, you know, one year he was out for uh, that being the head coach at Hopkins County Central, and then um, one year he was kind of part time um, for uh, you know while Christina was battling cancer, and uh, but he was still around. And he, I, I'll be honest, he, he's instrumental to the offense side of the ball. Uh, you know, as an administrator at, at the high school, I think he would love to just be an administrator, but. Uh, I don't know that he'll ever 
get that opportunity so long as I'm here. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't care if he comes to the principal one day. He's going to have to be in the press box for me. But, um, you know, it. Uh, you know, I, I, I guarantee it means a ton to those guys. You know, they graduated from here. They're from here. And I'll be honest with you, I know I didn't graduate from here, but my wife did. And this has always been, you know, a second home for us until we came home. And, and I said, you know, that when we were up at Moore that um, – you know, I, I want to be here until the day I retire. And um, and, and I, I wholeheartedly mean that. Um, I've, me and my wife feel like we've, we're in our forever home right now. And uh, we love Grayson County. We love being Cougars. Our kids love being here. We love that our kids are involved in athletics here. Um, you know, it, 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 you, to me, you can't be in a much better situation. The community, you know, you see their uh, response to us being successful the administration uh, from when Todd Johnson was principal to Josh Baldwin to Miss Cox uh, has been phenomenal. The board um, has been incredible, uh, you know, in, in my tenure here uh, with facilities, upgrades, and uh, Mr. Robinson and the, the board members. You know, to me, I, I, why would you want to be anywhere else? Um, and so um, it, it's a special place to be and, and, and the – they love uh, winning, and uh, and I love us winning too. And so I feel like we're a match made in heaven because we just want to win, baby. And uh, I hope there's more district championships down the line. Um, but this year we've got, you know, we've got still a lot of things to accomplish. And I think this group is a group that can do it. Um, you know, the good Lord keep us healthy. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I think we're ready to – to keep right on a rolling and um, you know we're going to enjoy this for the weekend and Monday we're going to put our hard hats back on and we're going to go to work and uh, keep the routine the way it's been all year because it ain't done us wrong and just keep right on uh, marching playing Cougar ball. Three weeks from tonight you'll play either Butler or Iroquois here at Cougar Stadium we can't wait for that but we got two more before that. Appreciate it, and give your team congratulations. Congratulations to you as well. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Go Cougars. That's head coach Brian Jones. More on the, on the fifth quarter show after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Station 103.9 The Moose and the Twin Lakes Best Mix K105. Cougar football on K105. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are, I keep wanting to say 12th district champions. I'm so used to that. They're not 12th district champions. They're district champions here in Class 5A, District 4. They are the district champions with a 16-6 win against Seneca here tonight. I know Mr. Spirit is loving it. 
If you're watching on K105 Digital Productions, you can see him. Uh, I don't think he knows that we can't hear what he's saying, but I'm sure he's giving our camera operator, Eli Smith, a, a, great, Earful. a great conversation down there. A couple of score updates that we'll bring you really quick before we wrap us up for the evening. As Let me refresh here and see and go through the good old scroll down here. Uh, Henderson leads Davis County 42-7, to uh, about five minutes to go in that game. Uh, Bowling Green leads 21-14, to and it looks like early in the fourth quarter of that game. Hart County leads Glasgow 15-12 to at the end of the third quarter. Uh, that's a big game happening there to see who could be the number one seed between two of the top teams there in 3A. Uh, I'm assuming it says Gators 21, Wildcats 14. I'm assuming that's Greenwood against Franklin Simpson leads late in the third quarter of that. And Graves County leads 34 to nothing against Marshall County late in the third quarter. Barron County on top of Warren Central 42 to 6. I know Owensboro Catholic defeated uh, defeated uh, Owensboro Catholic defeated Edmondson County. I was going to get there at some point. At the half though, Russellville and Caverna 32 all. How about calling that game? That'd be a high scoring game. Doesn't look like they're going home anytime soon. And that appears most of the scores that we have to bring you from around the region. Again, Fairdale was up big on Louisville Butler, which means that Fairdale would be potentially paired with Grayson County. Butler and Iroquois will play on Thursday. The loser of that game will be coming here in a couple of weeks in the Class 5A playoffs. We'll come back, wrap it up after this. Grayson County wins again by a final score of 16-6. to This is Cougar Football on K105. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Grayson County High School where the Cougars have picked up a 16-6 win to make themselves district champions against Seneca tonight. Uh, Sam and are joining you. The about our Grayson County Sheriff Norman Chaffins. I still have Coach Jones's headset turned up for some reason, Kayla. I was wondering why I was getting some extra ambiance, but it's not like it matters. It's just sitting right here. It's soaking wet, though. My goodness. I just picked it up, and it's almost like he just got dumped a yeah, uh, dunk booth or, something, or like something like that. It is a very wet headset. We're going to have to leave that out to dry so it doesn't mold or something next time he puts it on. Uh, we got to give away our Grayson County Sheriff's Office player of the game. Uh, the player of the game wins a challenge coin sponsored by the sheriff and Kaylor. We had some discussion, <laughs> but we're going to give it to Mason Carroll. Mason Carroll is going to be – we're going to give it to a senior offensive player. Had a big catch and run. Uh, yeah, I know it's an offensive player, but he did very well on the back end where he really never let any big plays get over his head. And that's big. Yeah, especially an athletic team like this. Uh, to run down the scoring from this game, uh, Grayson County started. That first drive was uh, pretty much a thing of beauty. They had one penalty. Other than that, 
no negative plays. Hanshaw finished it off with a one-yard touchdown run, and the Cougs were up 8-0 to zero with 3.30 left in the first quarter. And then it got kind of sloppy. <laughs> you had some punts, some fumbles, some interceptions on both sides. Grace County ended up getting the ball back with 1.50 to go in the game. It ended with a one-yard touchdown run by Colby Chaffins with just under a minute to go in the first half. And Grayson County was up 16-0 to zero at the half. And then Seneca had their first answer in the third quarter of play. They drive down eight plays, ends with a 30-yard touchdown pass on fourth and ten mm -hmm. from Spencer to Asher that made it 16-6. to six. And that is the rest of your scoring. You get some punts, you get some interceptions, you get some turnover on downs, and you had the last play that ends up the, – the rushing yardage is going to be kind of inflated for Grayson because that was, what, about a 40-yard gain yeah. on the last play of the game? So it does get inflated a little bit, but the only stat that matters, Kaler, is the scoreboard. 16 to 6. So Grayson County looking ahead. Next week we'll travel to Breckenridge County. We're back to 7 o'clock. So 7 o'clock start time from Harned. We might be on top of the press box, which it could be cold. It might be a little chilly next week. But if you don't want to make the trip, you can join us. But again, these I mean, it's a short trip up. This team deserves your support up there in Harned. And then two weeks, we'll be at Hancock County uh, for the final game of the regular season. A note on that game, that game will more than likely, if you're listening on our radio coverage, will be on Litchfield's Country Station 1039 The Moose. You can also download the WMTL app and listen that way if you prefer the radio broadcast and then you don't have to see our faces. Which yeah, that's understandable. I, I get it. Most people, most people prefer that. That's why I like to leave this camera up on us as least as possible. Usually just when Coach Jones is there because he, he, he makes us look Look better. A little bit, little bit yeah. better, which is not that hard. Can, no. I mean, we're pretty low. Uh, that'll wrap up our coverage, though, tonight. Grayson County wins the district championship for the first time since 2014. I want to thank the K105 Digital Productions crew for their hard work. Your camera operators were Eli Smith and Abby Hallett, and your director was Trey Cook. So for custodian Cameron Elmore and Kaylor Decker on a night where Grayson County picks up a 16-6 win against Seneca to clinch the district championship, this is Sam Gormley saying so long, everyone.